and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, The Crop Dusters. At dawn, Clutch and Company take off in the plane headed for the southern plantation of an old friend, Colonel Greenleaf Julep. The Colonel's been losing his cotton crop because of an unusual amount of bugs. That's why we're going. You mean we're in the crop dusting business? That's what it amounts to, Splinter. We're the first crop dusters in this area. Oh. <laughs> we shouldn't have mentioned dust. That makes Paddlefoot sneeze. That's why I brought along those masks. Look below, Spinner. That's Colonel Julep's plantation. Golly, he sure has got a lot of land. About 500 acres, all in cotton, except that pasture where we land. Uh oh, Clutch, there's a girl out there. That's Melissa Bell, the Colonel's daughter. Hi, y'all. Hi, yourself. Is the Colonel around? He's across the road. I'm awful worried, Mr. Cargo. My daddy, the Colonel, says if we have one more crop failure, we'll lose our old plantation. Mr. Hanson holds the mortgage. And unless we pay it, he gets our house and land. Spinner, Paddlefoot, and I are going to do our best to save your crop for you. Bless you, Clutch. You're always ready to help. Hello, Colonel. Looks like you're in trouble. Smallest crop of cotton and the biggest crop of bugs I ever saw. Which means we've got work to do. So we'll get started right away. How do we get into town? Oh, I'll take you. In our pickup truck. Good. Come on, Spinner, Paddlefoot. Let's go. Mr. Hanson says if I marry him, he'll tear up the mortgage. That's no good. If you marry him, he'll have you and the plantation, too. I don't want to marry him. But maybe that's the only thing to do. Not yet, it isn't. We're here to help. Give us a chance. Mr. Hanson owns all the land surrounding us, except one little corner owned by Jed McCracken. How is Mr. Hanson's cotton crop? Beautiful. Not a bug on his cotton anywhere. That's strange. His crop's so close to yours. Well, here we are, Clutch. You wait in the truck. We won't take a minute. May I help you, sir? I need some crop dusting compound. Hanson has the best, right over here. We're going to dust Colonel Julep's cotton crop. Whose crop did you say? Colonel Julep's. Well, in that case, you want nothing but the best. I insist you take our AAA super bug killer. I use it on my own crop. You recommend that is the best? Without hesitation. Hi, <laughs> what a friendly dog. Yeah, if he likes you. We'll take a dozen sacks, mister, and hurry it up. We've got a dusting job to do. Clutch and company are soon back at the plantation and have completed preparations to try out the special dusting compound. See that your masks are adjusted tight, Spinner. We wouldn't want to breathe any of that stuff. We're all set, Clutch. Okay, release the lever, Spinner. Here she goes. and company make pass after pass up and down the rolls of cotton until they reach the final row. Clutch! Wires strung between those trees! Hold on. It looks like a crash. How can Clutch and company avoid crashing into that wire? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, The Crop Dusters. You remember last time Clutch and Company arrived at Colonel Greenleaf Julep's cotton plantation to find the crops being destroyed. In an effort to help the Colonel, they dust his crops. After finishing, they prepare to land. Clutch! Wires strung between those trees! Brace yourself, Spinner. I'm going to mush under. For sure we were gone at that time. Me too. Pop out and we'll look for a way to fly out of here. <sighs> Not much chance. These stumps are right in the way. Well, we got in here. I guess... Watch! We're trapped! Hey, what the... I'll teach you insects to tackle my crop. I'll get rid of every last one of you while... Stop! Don't do that! Huh? 
A bug talking? Bugs nothing. Well, bless my buttons. I'm sure sorry. I thought I'd caught a couple of giant bugs. Well, you can see we're not bugs. Why, of course I can. I almost run this pitchfork clean through you. So your crops are bothered, too. Why, them bugs been invading my land from the Colonel South 40. Did I hear my name? I saw your plane come down, Clutch Boy. Are you all okay? We had to mush in, but we're okay, Colonel. Yeah, then we got trapped by this net. Well, just as true as my name's Jed McCracken, I didn't know I'd trapped anything human. Jed McCracken, this here's Clutch Cargo and Company. They've come to help me get rid of the insects. In that case, I've got something in the barn to show you. That sure is a whopper, all right. Biggest bug I ever saw. Wow! Looks like a big ladybug. Golly, she's as big as you, Paddlefoot. If you think that's big, you ought to see the ones that got away. You mean you've seen more like this? A whole flock of them buzzed my house the other night. That's why I strung up the wires and set that net. Well, you can see it's no ordinary insect. By golly, we've got to find out where they're coming from. That's right, Clutch. When bugs start growing that big, we are in real trouble. Meanwhile, in the back room in Hanson's store, good work, Bob, we're gaining on the Colonel's mortgage. Oh, yeah. Pretty soon the plantation and Miss Melissa will be yours, huh? Right. One more crop failure for the Colonel, and he'll never have enough to pay the mortgage. Then Hanson steps in and marries Melissa. And put that thing down. Oh, now you've hurt her feelings. Don't call my little friends things. They don't like you. I'm sorry, Bob, but they give me the creeps. Still, oh, all right. We forgive you, Mr. Hanson. Don't we, Violin? Have you loaded the surplus flying jeep like I told you? Yes, Mr. Hanson. There it is. Now, back, loaded with thousands of my newest bug creations. The uh, half bull weevils and half lightning bugs. The lightning bugs light up and show the bull weevils where to eat. Very clever, Bob. Mr. Clutch Cargo is going to get a big surprise. When he came to the store for bug poison, I sold him bug vitamins. He sprayed the bug vitamins on the colonel's crop. Now we'll spray on the bugs. What a terrible thing to do. How will it affect the colonel's crop? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo, with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot, in another exciting adventure, the Crop Dusters. You remember last time, Clutch and company sprayed bug vitamins on the crops instead of bug poison. Mr. Hanson and Bob were on their way to the plantation to release thousands of bugs on the Colonel's crops. We'll stay just above the crop while we spray them with your bugs, Bob. Mr. Cargo don't know how much he helped us when he sprayed the crops with bug vitamins. Mr. Hanson, we better get out of here. Why, will they be surprised in the morning when they find the crops all chewed up? That stuff we sprayed on the Colonel's crops didn't seem to do much good. They sure don't look any better. If anything, they look worse. <laughs> look! Paddlefoot's cornered something. I'll say he has. It's a giant bug. And from the size of it, I'd say it almost cornered Paddlefoot. Thousands of bugs eating the crops. We've got to do something. We've got to get stronger bug poison and spray again as soon as possible. We'll take the pickup and go into town. I'll get Jed and we'll have your plane ready by the time you get back. That's a good idea. Let's go, Spinner. Clutch and company head for Hanson's store. It's strange, Spinner. We spray the Colonel's crops with Hanson's bug eradicator, and instead of killing the bugs, it appears to make them stronger. Yeah, with bugs that size, it wouldn't take long to destroy all the crops. 
Pop. Maybe Mr. Hanson has a stronger voice. I sure hope so, Clutch. Uh-oh. Here comes Cargo and that kid again. Get into the back room and start mixing dusting compound, Bob. Uh, shall I make it extra strong, boss? Sure. Go heavy on the appetizer and don't forget to add plenty of bug vitamins. The uh, sure thing, boss. Good morning, Mr. Cargo. What can I do for you this time? About that dusting compound you sold me yesterday. It did more harm than good. The Colonel's crops are still overrun with bugs. Bigger bugs than before. I thought maybe you'd have some stronger bug killer. I do, I do. You must try some of my special mix Super Surefire Triple X Bug Eradicator. May I examine a bag of it? Why, certainly, certainly. Oh, Bob, bring out a bag of that Triple X. Uh, coming up, Mr. Hanson. Thanks. I just want to make sure it'll do the job. I'll try a little on this bug I brought along. Here, Spinner. Hold the jar. Okay, Clutch. Look, Clutch. He likes it. He sure does. He ate it all up and looking for more. It isn't affecting him a bit. Look, mister, are you sure... They're gone. Those two are up to something. And I'm going to find out what it is. But first, we've got to take care of those bugs. Come, Spinner. Let's drive over to Centerville and pick up some real dusting compound. That clutch character is wising up. We better do something, but quick. Uh, why not use plan B-U-G number two? That's not a bad idea, Bob. Cargo is liable to use real bug killer from here on. But that won't harm old B-U-G number two, none. Oh, no. What manner of giant bug can this be? <laughs> be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo, with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot, in another exciting adventure, The Crop Dusters. You remember last time, Clutch and company tested Hanson's special mixed Super Surefire Triple X Bug Eradicator on a tiny bug. The bug liked it. When Clutch tried to find Mr. Hanson and Bob, they had disappeared, but only to release Beastie Bug Number Two. He sounds hungry enough to eat up a whole plantation without stopping. No, I thought you might be needing him, so I haven't fed him for three days, Mr. Hanson. Good boy, Bob. Now let's tow old number two out to the colonel's plantation and turn him loose. Clutch and company find real bug-killing dusting compound in Centerville and lose no time getting back to the plantation. Good hunt, Clutch boy. Okay, Spinner. Release the spray. Darn that old clutch cargo. He's killing off all my beautiful bugs. We'll fix him, Bob. Go release Beastie number two. Yeah, that'll fix him. I raised Beastie on bug killer. How are we doing, Spinner? Fine, Clutch. This new stuff sure does the job. <laughs> Uh, stand back, Mr. Hanson. Here goes. How's our spray holding out, Spinner? Just about enough for two more passes, Clutch. Good. That'll do it. Sure is working this time. Those bugs are dropping like flies. Isn't Clutch wonderful? The hungry giant boll weevil soon finds Colonel Julep's field. That boy, look at old beastie bug go. Here comes Cargo back on his last run. Now we'll see some fun. Almost finished, Clutch. of which I've never seen before. That spray doesn't affect him at all, Clutch. We'll give him an extra dose. Hang on. Here goes. He didn't faze him, Clutch. He's still eating away. We'll try and scare him off. What's happening out there? Looks like they spotted something. 
His clutch plum loco, he's going into a dive. like we've got a real bug fight on our hands. Watch, he's getting closer! Watch, he's right on our tail! I know it. I'm trying to shake him. <laughs> Clutch! The ground! That giant bug swooping at Clutch's plane and Clutch diving at the ground. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, the Crop Duster. You remember last time, Clutch and company started dusting with a real bug poison. Mr. Hanson and Bob had released Beastie Bug Number Two. The dusting spray wouldn't phase Beastie. Instead, the bug started into the air after Clutch and Company. There seemed to be no way for Clutch to shake the giant from the tail of his plane. Then suddenly, Clutch! That Clutch cargo is some smart flyer. He power dived that bow weevil right into my barbed wire bug trap. Good work, Clutch Boy. Thanks, Colonel. For a minute there, I, I thought we wouldn't make it. You all must be plum took it out. Come on in, I'll make you all some sassafras tea. Boo hoo 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 hoo. That old Clutch cargo bumped off my beastie bug. <laughs> there, there. Don't take it so hard. We're not finished yet. We'll turn loose beastie number one. Oh, no, not beastie number one. Yes, beastie number one. That way we can take care of cargo and get the plantation, too. Boo, boo. Quiet. Come on, let's go. Open her up. Trump card, your deadly giant polka dot caterpillar. I just hope after he eats up the colonel's plantation, he don't turn on us, cause he's mighty hungry. Look at him go. Thanks for the tea, Miss Belissey. Well, guess our work here is finished. And thanks for the crumpet, too. What? <laughs> Quick, into the plane. We'll stop him. The rest of you head for the storm cellar. I'm afraid. Quick, Colonel. Which way to the storm cellar? Clutch and Spinner rush to the plane to stop the horrible caterpillar. Where's Melissa? Well, I thought she was right behind us. <laughs> Melissa, honey. Over this way, child. <laughs> Gonna catch her. Only one thing to do. Ram it. <laughs> he got him. What got the giant bug? Hooray! He saved Melissa. But he's wrecked his plane, doing it. We did it, Clutch. And the big bug track lead right into that red barn. Hang on. We're going to crash land right in front of it. Uh-oh, we're trapped. Clutch Cargo is coming after us. That ought to hold him till the sheriff gets here. Uh, I know we shouldn't have fooled with Clutch Cargo. Oh, Clutch, how can we ever repay you for ridding our plantation of those dreadful critters? And that includes those two creepy varmints, Hanson and Bob. We're glad to oblige, Miss Felicity. If they ever come back, be sure and let me know. If they ever do, I got me a sure-fire bug eradicator this time. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
And so ends the story of Clutch, Cargo, and his pals, Spinner and Paddlefoot, and the Crop Dusters. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting adventure with Clutch, Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, Spin and Gulch. After their last adventure, Clutch Cargo and company are commissioned by the Smithsonian Institute to trace old western stagecoach trails. This one leads to Clutch. Not sure, Spinner. But it's our job to find out. We've been on it two days, and it just seems to go on and on. We're running low on water, too. The old stagecoach has needed water. We ought to spot a water hole soon. What is it, Paddlefoot? What do you see? It looks like a marsh or something. It's a water hole, Clutch. We're in luck. Let's get out and fill our cakes. Hey, Puddlefoot, wait for us. Oh, boy, maybe it's deep enough for a swim. Hold it, Paddlefoot. Look. Danger, this water hole, poison. Oh, my gosh. Come on, Paddlefoot, let's get out of here. Clutch, look, our truck, it's sinking. Quick, Sam. It broke through the crust. Our supplies! What are we going to do now? I still got the map and compass. Let's start hiking. <sighs> Come on. These old stagecoach tracks are fairly clear. We've followed them for hours. They're bound to lead somewhere. What's that up ahead? It's... It's a stagecoach! Hurry! Head it off! Hold it! Hold it! Stop! We just want to get on as passengers. Passengers? Real live passengers? Boy, I haven't had one of them since the Grover Cleveland ran for president. Hop aboard and let's get going. Get up. Yahoo! By the way, my name is Cargo. Well, mine's Fargo, Cargo. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Fargo. Fortunate for us to find a real live stagecoach line still in operation. Why, I've been running supplies between Dead End Gulch and Last Chance Junction for 50 years. This is fun, huh, Paddlefoot? Sure peaceful out here, Mr. Fargo. Was peaceful, you mean, Mr. Cargo? A bunch of scalawags come down out of Rattlesnake Creek a while back. I think it's the old Buck Buzzard Brothers. They've been giving us lots of trouble. Can't your marshal stop them? We ain't got a marshal. Didn't need one till now. This narrow pass is the entrance to Dead End Gulch. Only way to get back out, too. <laughs> well, I'll be. Whoa there, Nelly. Looks like a log. <sighs> Who in tarnation done a thing like that? Great, you guys. <laughs> Uh-oh, a hold-up Western style. What will happen to Clutch and Company? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, Head and Gulch. You remember last time, Clutch and Company were looking for old stagecoach trains. While following one, their truck suddenly sank in quicksand. With only a map and compass to guide them, they started out. They were soon picked up by a stagecoach driver, Fargo. As they entered a narrow pass... This here is a stick-up. You two in the back seat, up with your hands. 
You too, horse face. <laughs> it's them ding-busted scallywags from Rattlesnake Creek again. Cut out that chit-chat and toss down that strong box. We better do what the man says, Clutch. Boys, let's get out of here. Boy, this is a heavy one. Wow, that was a close one, Paddlefoot. Those were real live stagecoach robbers. <laughs> hey, Fargo, how come you threw down that gold without even a fight? <laughs> <laughs> Happens every day. <laughs> How come you can laugh at something like this? Rest easy there, my friend. <laughs> that weren't nothing but fool's gold. We ends pay them pesky critters off with it all the time. Keeps peace. <laughs> they got a bank full of fool's gold. <laughs> Think they're billionaires. <laughs> I hid the real stuff under the seat. Clever thinking. But you should elect a marshal and stop this lawlessness. I talked to the mayor only yesterday. He said he'd think about it. Howdy, mayor. What you doing? Oh, hi, Fargo. Decided to call an election for a city marshal. Who you got for candidates? Ballots open to anyone who thinks he's brave enough to face them rotten varmints. But I'm afraid we ain't got a man like that within a hundred miles. Hope you'll find a candidate soon, Mayor. I was just hit again outside town. I don't know how much longer we can keep this up. We're about to run out of fool's gold. Howdy, Mayor. <laughs> Deposit, uh, Big Bad Bill? Why, that's the gang that held up the stage. Yep. But like the mayor says, ain't no one around here feels up to stopping them. <laughs> Look at that, boys. They want to elect me marshal. But, boss, I don't see your name on that election notice. Who else will have the nerve to run me out of town except me? Of course, if there was, pow, pow, pow. What's he mean, pow, 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 Clutch? Not sure, Spinner. But I aim to find out. Hold on there, mister. If the mayor doesn't object, I'd like to get on that ballot. Oh, boy, Clutch. I was hoping you'd speak up. Tell him it's okay, mayor. Why, well, you're, uh, yeah, of course, of course, uh, Mr. Cargo. Well, uh, you'd be glad to put your name on the ballot. Well, well, so I'm going to have an opponent after all. For a while, that is. Then it'll be pow, pow, pow. Come on, boys. Gee, Clutch. Those crooks mean business. Could be, Spinner. But somebody has to stand up to those guys. All right, you guys. All up them shooting irons. We got some fancy target practice coming up. <laughs> we got you, boss. Bullets for ballots. Sounds like they mean business. What's in store for Clutch and Company? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, Head and Gulch. You remember last time, Clutch and Company with Fargo were held up while driving the stagecoach. Everyone knows it was Big Bad Bill and the gang, but no one will stop him. Clutch decides to run for Marshall. When the bad guys find out, all up them shooting irons. We got some fancy target practice coming up. <laughs> Get your ballots in. Everybody must vote. Here, take my ballot. Come on. Over here. here, you guys. Take this bunch of votes for me over and stuff them in a ballot box. I don't want this here cargo fellow winning on no fluke. But what if he tries to stop us, boys? Then we go pow, 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 eh, boys? You got the idea, boys. Now go get started stuffing. The coast is clear. Quick, start stuffing. Hold it. Hold it right there. Just one vote per person. That's all the law allows. Uh, clutch cargo. <laughs> uh, I was uh, just going to vote for a few friends of mine. And I came along to see that no one interfered. That's quite a six-shooter you got there. Mind if I take a look? Not at all, cargo. I've still got my spare. I haven't shot one of these things in years. Do you mind? Go right ahead. But don't get your fingers stuck in the nozzle. Hmm. Worked everybody 
go. Hey, you two. Come back here. Where in Sam Hill you two running? I thought I told you to stuff that ballot box. We tried to stuff it, boss, but Clutch Cargo got in our way. Yeah, he cheats. He knows how to use a gun. Do you two really eyes what you've done? Clutch Cargo slobbles get elected, and you know what that means? Yeah, boss. It'll be pow, pow, pow for us. Clutch Cargo, you've been unanimously elected. You are now our city marshal. Congratulations, Clutch. I know you can do it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, and we'd better break the bad news to Big Bad Bill. Spinner, you and Paddlefoot can be my number one deputies. Well, you be careful now. Big Bad Bill and his boys are tricky as cornered coyotes. Now listen, you guys. We got a great thing going here. Pleasant climate, good pickings, hicks to push around and full of goodies. And I, Big Bad Bill, aims to keep it that way. Gee, boss, you mean... We gotta face up to the new Marshal Clutch Cargo? Right, and here he comes now. Follow me. Big Bad Bill. They don't call me Big Bad Bill for nothing. There ain't room in this town for both of us. You're right. And I'll give you to the count of ten to get out. Fair enough, Marshal. Start counting. One. Two. Oh, my gosh. Clutch is outgunned. Three to one. Three. Four. Five. Hey! Clutch doesn't even have a gun. Six. What a spot to be in. Clutch facing a gang with no gun. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, Dead End Gulch. You remember last time, Clutch and company came into Dead End with Fargo. When Clutch found out how lawless the town really was, he decided to run for Marshall and clean it up. When the henchmen found out, they decided to do away with Clutch. Now, Clutch faces them without even a gun. Hey, Clutch doesn't even have a gun! Six. Seven. Get ready, boys. But, boss, he ain't even got a gun. Eight. He must be up to something. Trigger happy to shoot me, Clutch. <laughs> so I thought I'd better ride shotgun for ye. Thanks, Fargo. I was getting a little worried my bluff might not work. Them sidewinder sure skedaddled out of town. We ought to have some peace and quiet around here for a change. You can come out now, Paddlefoot. The shooting's all over. They're gone for now. Let's keep our guard up just in case. That clutch cargo tricked us this time, but now it's our time. Oh, no, boss. We don't have to face him again, do we? Where's your sporting blood, Willie? Haven't you forgotten how we arrived here in the first place? You mean... You mean that... The, the... Oh, yeah. I plumb forgot about that. Why is it you two make me think of everything? Come on, it's parked just behind that rock. Ah, there she is. Right where we hit her. <laughs> Remember the day, boys, when we just happened to find this armored car parked at the curb with its motor running? Yeah. And the driver was in having coffee with his hands up because Willie had a gun in his back. Come on, you two. Hop in. We'll give Clutch Cargo the shock of his life with this armored truck. His fancy shooting won't do him a bit of good against this armor plate and this bulletproof glass. I get it, boss. We're gonna make a little withdrawal from the bank. You said it. But, boss, we're loaded down with greenbacks from the last haul. That stuff's hot. Besides, who wants a bunch of dirty old greenbacks 
when there's gold to be had. Yeah, we can dump this lettuce and load up with the real stuff. Look, Clutch, what's that? It's, it's an armored car. It's headed right for the bank. Brace yourself, boys. The bank is about to open for business. That was Big Bad Bill and his boys back again. We gotta think of something fast. Too late, Clutch. They're getting away. I saw the whole thing. Come on, aboard the mayor's car. Hop in, Marshal. We'll catch him. Those varmints left all those greenbacks and carted off all that worthless fool's gold. The fools! Hey, boss, here comes Clutch Cargo and some kind of hot rod. Oh, yeah? Hey, Willie, get ready with that turret gun. Right, boss. How can Clutch and Fargo avoid being hit by gang bullets? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, Dead End Gulch. You remember last time, Clutch and Company with Fargo had run the bad guys out of town, but they decided to come back with the aid of their little friend and armored car. As Clutch and Fargo started after them with another car, Hey, Willie, get ready with that gun turret. Right, boss. Heads down. Their aim can't be too good on this rocky road. Hey, Willie, it's my turn to take a crack at him. You're having all the fun. I don't care whose turn it is. Keep blasting. What do we do now? We'll outrun them until I think of something. Hey, they stopped firing. They must have run out of ammunition. Caught. We got them caught. This road ends up there at the Box Canyon Mine. Good. But be careful. It may be just a trick. We can't go nowhere from here. We better do something quick, boss. Here comes the marshal. Stand back, you guys. I know how to stop him. Or a clutch cargo and his pals. Now we'll backtrack and find the road out of here. With all this heavy gold, my brakes won't hold. We're gonna crash! Let me out of here! Okay, you guys. This is the end of the line. Gee, Marshal Cargo, we've learned our lesson. We should have paid attention when they told us crime don't pay. It sure doesn't. And you'll have plenty of time in jail to think about it. The Smithsonian Institute will be pleased when we bring back a real live stagecoach and driver. We're returning the money to its owners. Yeah, Clutch. 
<laughs> Biggest payload I ever had. Yeah, and Powderfoot is riding shotgun. He's not taking any more chances. <laughs> and so ends the story of Fudge Cargo and his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and Dead End Gulch. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting adventure with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo and his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, The Desert Queen. Clutch and company off on another adventure have booked passage on an old-fashioned riverboat and are headed downstream on a secret mission. Looks like a lazy day for Clutch, Spinner, and Paddlefoot. Golly, Clutch, I bet I'm the luckiest kid in the world taking all these trips with you. You're a big help, too, Spinner. Remember, though, no one must know that the purpose of our trip is to find the Desert Queen. About three weeks ago, a 29-pound ruby, the biggest and most perfect ruby in the world, was stolen from the King's National Museum of Monrovia. 29 pounds? Why, that weighs as much as Paddlefoot. Oh. Rumor has it the Desert Queen, who once lived in the palace at Monrovia, feels that the ruby is rightfully hers. And they say she sent an agent from her desert hideaway to Monrovia to return the ruby to her. So, Spinner, don't speak to strangers. This boat may be loaded with spies. Don't worry, Kutch. I'll be careful. And just at this moment, farther along the ship's deck lurks a strange figure, very interested in Clutch and Company. Say, I didn't finish packing those suitcases, Spinner. I better do it now. Okay, I think I'll stay here. The sun feels good. Well, well, young man, did you drop this? No, I didn't, sir. You are the only passenger on board of Boy Scout Age. You must have dropped this Boy Scout knife. I do belong to the Scouts, but I don't have my knife yet. Well, my boy, you do now. That's your knife. But, but Clutch said not to... Talk to strangers? <laughs> Always an excellent idea, Sonny. <laughs> Never talk to strangers. But, mister, you're a... a stranger? <laughs> not anymore. We're friends. I gave you the knife, remember? Well... I'm the Maharaja of Sphinxville. <laughs> All my friends call me Big Ma. What's your name? Spinner, and this is Paddlefoot. <coughs> oh, how delightful. <laughs> Mr. Maharaja, what's in that basket? Is that your lunch? <laughs> no, Spinner. This basket contains a delightful gift for my little grandson. A cobra. <laughs> a deadly cobra. They make wonderful pets when they're tamed. Well, Spinner, let me say I'm extremely happy to have met you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Maharaja. Maybe I'll see you again. Maybe, Spinner, maybe. But I doubt it. Too bad. <laughs> you didn't like him, did you, boy? I guess I shouldn't have talked to him. I'd better tell Clutch. What's that, Spinner? A man, Clutch. The Maharaja Sphinx Bill. He gave me this knife, said his friends called him Big Ma. He was so nice, Clutch. And he had a cobra in the basket for his grandson. Spinner, I asked you not to talk to strangers. Golly, I'm sorry, Clutch. We've got to be careful. While we were on deck, someone searched our luggage. Lucky I've got the map in my pocket. There, that message will warn them about Clutch Cargo. <coughs> Away to Sphinxville, you beautiful bird. <coughs> Only another day and night's travel, and we'll be there. Right, Clutch, it won't be long now. <coughs> Look out, Spinner! <coughs> They can't hear us! My, what a pity. We've lost those two nice people, and that water is filled with whirlpools. Probably crocodiles, too. And yesterday, I saw a stingray. I must notify the captain... someday. Can Clutch and company survive those dangerous swirling waters? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Cargo and his pals, Spinner and Paddlefoot, in another exciting adventure, The Desert Queen. 
You remember last time, Clutch and company were traveling by riverboat to the Desert Queen's Palace to bring back a 29-pound ruby stolen from the Monrovia National Museum. Clutch, Spinner, and Paddlefoot were leaning on the boat rail when suddenly it gave way. Help! Help! Come back! Wait for us! They can't hear us. Clutch! Help! Something's caught my feet! Hold on, Spinner boy. I'm coming. What the... It's got me, too. It, is it a whirlpool? No, it's a net. We're being pulled toward shore. I wonder who's on the other end of this net. In a moment, we'll know. Halt! Who are you? How'd you get into my net? Take it easy with that gun, mister. Name is Cargo. Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo, the famous adventurer author? I don't know how famous, but I'm the one. Clutch Cargo, why, I read your last book. My name's Twaddle, Colonel Lucifer Twaddle. Colonel Twaddle, the foremost authority on prehistoric bones? The same. Well, I read your last book, Colonel Twaddle. Very interesting. Well, that makes it a mutual admiration society. Oh, oh. Paddlefoot liked the part about dinosaur bones. I see. What brings you here? And so, Colonel Twaddle, the ship's rail broke, we fell overboard, and here we are. However, I managed to save this map. It'll show us the overland route to the Desert Queen's stronghold. We're at this point now. First stop, Pharaoh Oasis. Then a short journey by camel to the Desert Queen's palace. Do you prefer your camel with one hump or two? With this gang, we'll need a two-humper. Oh, that's good. I just happen to have one in the bushes. This is my camel, Sir Duffy. Gee, Paddlefoot, a real camel. And we get to ride him. Already? Clutch, you ride the front hump, Spinner the back hump, Paddlefoot behind Spinner, and I'll ride the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Golly, Clutch, this is like riding on a small-sized roller coaster. Right, Spinner. Just be sure to hang on. I don't know why it is. I always end up with the cheap seats. I'm extremely happy I could join you, Clutch. Perhaps I'll discover some giant brontosaurus bone. Anything is possible where we're going, Colonel. Just be on the lookout for Big Ma. He's dangerous. For miles through hot desert sands they trudge. Tired and thirsty, Clutch and company with Colonel Twaddle arrive upon a welcome scene. Look, Clutch! An aosis! That's an oasis, Spinner. Anyway, it means water. Don't drink too fast now. Cold water isn't good for you when you're too hot. We'll fill the canteens and be off. He's riding a one-humper. No time to lose. Come on, let's go. He's headed for Sphinxville, too. I hope we can keep Big Ma in sight. I doubt if we can. He's pulling away. Go, Duffy, go! Looks like we've lost him, Clutch. He's gone. Good heavens, Clutch. Look ahead. Sandstorm. Worst thing that could happen. Right in our path, too. Traveling this way fast. Cover your noses and mouth. Will Clutch Cargo and Company be buried beneath the desert sand? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo and his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, The Desert Queen. You remember last time, Clutch and company were on their way to the Desert Queen's palace. Traveling on the desert with Colonel Twaddle's camel, they had just seen Big Ma disappear over a sand dune. Then, without warning... Don't give up, men. <coughs> As old Swampy would say, where there's a will, there are several ways. What's that? that sounds like motors. Stay right there, all of you. I'm going to take a little trip. Little by little, Clutch inches his way through the storm, digging, clawing, pulling his body, the sound of motors getting louder. Well, it was a sandstorm, all right, but a whirlwind machine. A well-thought-out plan to do away with all this. But only a Ben Big Ma. Spinner, Colonel Twaddle, you can get up now. It's over. Everybody okay? Fine, Clutch. 
Now that we're underway again, it won't be long before we see the Desert Queen's palace. Let's hope there'll be no more mishaps. I have a feeling we haven't seen the last of Big Mom. We're here, Sphinxville and the Palace of the Desert Queen. How do we get in, Clutch? Read that sign. It says, to open gate, sound your musical A. Musical A? Yes, you know, Spinner. Sing the scale. You mean, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Well, that didn't work. Let's all try it. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. Good boy, Paddlefoot. You've opened the gate. Come on. What a delightful place. Sure looks quiet. But we don't know yet if it's friendly. Clutch, look! Get him, Punchy. Oh, this guy means business. Open the gate, Paddlefoot! Howl! Howl! Hi, hard, Paddlefoot! Oh, oh! He, he can't. He's too scared. Only one chance. Trip him. Hard spinner, run! Too close for comfort. Hey, where's Colonel Twaddle? They got him, Clutch. He didn't get out. Then we've got to get in. We can't use the gate, so we'll use the wall. But how, Clutch? It's too high. Not when you've got Duffy. Come on, boy. Ever see a camel ladder spinner? Not till now. Step on this ledge. There. Hold on. We're going over the top. <sighs> Quiet now and stick together. We've got to have a little talk with the Desert Queen. Slowly they move until they find a stairway leading to a door. Easy, Spinner. Once inside this door and we're in the palace. Ah! Catch! Look! Mummies! You're right, Spinner. A mummy tomb. Uh-oh. Locked in. I wonder what we've gotten ourselves into this time. Mummies are thousands of years old. Wow. Locked in a tomb of mummies with one still alive. Will they get out? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Cargo and his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, The Desert Queen. You remember last time, Clutch and company luckily escaped the razor-sharp knife of Pungees. Clutch, Spinner, and Paddlefoot went back inside in search of Twaddle. Golly, Clutch, Paddlefoot's attacking the mummy. No, Paddlefoot, don't. There may be a curse on that mummy. He's unwinding the bandage, Clutch. Stop him. It's too late, Spinner. The damage is done. And look, it's Colonel Twaddle. Is, is he all right, Clutch? He's alive, but that was a close one. Just a few more minutes and he'd have been a real mummy. I bet we can thank Big Ma for this. Thank Paddlefoot. He's the real hero. <laughs> Where am I? What happened? You're going to be all right, Colonel Twaddle. That was a tight one. I'll say, just like me first tuxedo. Stay with him, Spinner. I want to look around. We've got to find a way out. Sometimes these walls have secret doors. No, no luck. I feel much better, Clutch. Raring to go. I'll teach them to twiddle with twaddle. Good, Colonel. Together, maybe we can find a way out. Right behind Clutch and his friends, an ancient sarcophagus slowly opens. Oh, no, not another live one. She sure looks alive to me. I can't believe it. Must be my younger water fever coming back. That's not fever, Twaddle. She's real. Shh. She's going to speak. I welcome you to my palace, gentlemen. I am the Desert Queen. Thank you for all of us, Your Highness. May I ask who you are? This gentleman is Colonel Lucifer Twaddle, prehistoric bone specialist. 
And this is Spinner, my young pal, and his dog, Paddlefoot. My name is Clutch Cargo. I am highly honored, sir. I have read your adventure book. Who sent you here? The King of Monrovia sent us to find you to plead with you to return the priceless 29-pound ruby to the National Museum. Sir, I do not have the ruby, nor have I seen it since I left it in the museum. Well, the ruby has disappeared, and as the story goes, you are supposed to have sent someone to steal it. This is terrible. I have always believed the ruby should remain in the Monrovia Museum. Who could have taken it? Clutch! Do you think Big Mom? Just a moment, Spinner. Do you know the Maharaja of Sphinxville, Your Highness? Very well. He is one of my most trusted subjects. Maybe so, but nevertheless a very dangerous man. Clutch tells the Queen about their trip and their narrow escapes and how they always saw Big Ma running from the scene. We must be careful. If what you say is true, the Maharaja may be planning to seize my throne. Ears have heard every word that was said, for just inside the mummy case door, a huge figure lurks. Please be quiet. These tunnels echo. Stay together, everyone. Right, Clutch. Strange man, the Maharaja, always carrying that big basket. I've never asked him, but I think that is his briefcase. He told Spinner it was a gift for his grandson. Said it was a cobra. Right, Spinner? Spinner? They're gone. Disappeared in thin air. Colonel Twaddle! Well, they couldn't have gone far. Well, there's another door right... <gasps> Spinner and Twaddle gone. The Queen kidnapped. And Clutch knocked out cold. Is this the end? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo and his pals Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, The Desert Queen. You remember last time Clutch and company with Colonel Twaddle had met the Desert Queen who, as Clutch and his friends with the Queen started through a secret tunnel, Spinner, Twaddle, and Paddlefoot disappeared. Turning back... Sorry you two won't be able to enjoy our little game as much as we will. <laughs> you have a very dark future, Your Highness. <laughs> Keep your eyes on that wall, Mr. Cargo. In a moment, your little playmate will enter. <laughs> Pretty ferocious looking. Now, if I can hypnotize him by staring him down like Swampy told me, then he'll be friendly, I hope. Steady, boy, steady. Easy does it. Careful, easy. <coughs> It worked. Phew. Now, come on, boy. Come on. Nice, kitty. Easy, easy. Stay. Good, kitty. Stay. Now to stand on his back. There, now if I can just straighten up, I can get these ropes over this pole. A little more and... Got it. Now to open that mummy case. Hope her highness is okay. Are you all right, your highness? Perfectly, Mr. Cargo. But so hurt to think my most trusted subject, the Maharaja, would try to do away with me. Like he's probably trying to do with Spinner, Twaddle, and Paddlefoot. Follow me, Mr. Cargo. We'll use my secret tunnel. I'm sure we will find them headed for the open air arena. The Desert Queen pulls the bottom bill of an ancient bird statue. Suddenly, a portion of the wall opens, revealing a tunnel. Come quickly, Mr. Cargo. There's no time to lose. Uh oh we're near the end of this tunnel, and I hear voices. That's the march to the slave market. Look, there's Spinner and Twaddle and Paddlefoot. I've got to stop them. Not that mob, Mr. Cargo. Wait, we'll find a way. No time to lose. Is there another way to reach them? Through that door. What are you intending to do with them, Big Ma? Sell them as slaves worth their weight in gold. Made it. What luck. That rope is tied to that beam across the arena. Take that. And now for a sky ride, Big Ma. Help. Let me down. I can't stand heights. <laughs> Here's a three-point skid landing. Yeah, 
I give up. I give up. <laughs> the ruby. He had it all the time in that basket. And he told me it was a cobra. He was the only cobra spinner. What's that old saying about one bad apple spoils the bunch? He won't harm anyone else, Mr. Cargo. My faithful subjects will see to that. Please return this ruby to its rightful place. The National Museum in Monrovia. That will be our pleasure, Your Highness. Scratch, scratch, look. When Big Bob dug that trench in the ground, he uncovered the world's greatest brontosaurus femur bone. Just what I've always wanted. Hooray! Now Trottle won't have to fiddle with the shovel. Please come back again sometime. Our gate will always be open. Thank you, Your Highness. And for you, little man, a kiss. <sighs> and so ends the story of Clutch Cargo and the Desert Queen. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting adventure with Clutch Cargo and his pal, Spinner and Paddlefoot. with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and the Devil Bird. Clutch and company are winging their way out over the ocean to the little island of Rapatapa in answer to an urgent message asking their help. That's the island just ahead, Spinner. Gee, it looks peaceful, Clutch. It isn't for the natives. Who are they? They're called the Boleros. The leader of the tribe is Chief Mambo. For some mysterious reason, the whole tribe was forced to leave their real home on the island of Tekanapa. It's here on the map. Settled down here on this island called Rapatapa. Clutch throttles back and drops the nose of his plane gently as he descends toward the island. With the wind currents around these islands, we could stay up here like this all day. You mean without using the engine? Sure. Gliding spinner, just like the seagulls. They ride the wind currents like this for hours. Only we're not helping Chief Bombo and the Boleros up here. Let's set her down. As Clutch taxis past a fat barrel cactus, a strange figure lurks behind it, watching. That's strange. The beach is deserted. Gosh, it sure is quiet. <laughs> Someone's shooting at us. Quick, Spinner, hand me the signal flag. White flag, Clutch. I'll show them we've come in peace. They shot it to pieces. Give me the red flag. I'll wave it to draw their fire while you run for cover behind those rocks. Hey, Clutch. Come on, Paddlefoot. Clutch grabs the blasting rifle and waves the red flag. The shooting stops suddenly. Throw down your gun, senor. I demand your surrender. I have no guns. Then put up your hands. I have won this battle. Say, who are you anyway? I am General Admiral Patskero, at your service. What are you doing here? He here to help me, Chief Mambo. You are Clutch Cargo with friend Spinner and Dog Paddlefoot. I see pictures in Adventure Logbook. Clutch Cargo, a thousand apologies for shooting at you. I thought you were the enemy. General Admiral Patsquaro, big soldier of fortune. We hire him to invade home island to drive enemy out. But who is this enemy that drove you from your home island, Chief? Giant condor bird chase us all away. A giant condor? Hmm. Look, Clutch, there's a boat just offshore. That boat belonged to Trader Ace. Ahoy there, Chief Mambo. I see you have visitors. Just to it, sir. Here for a friendly visit with the islanders. I see you're a coconut trader, Mr. Ace. That's right. I'm taking this load of coconut milk across to the mainland for the poor little orphans. Well, I must be on my way. Gosh, Trader Ace sure is a kind man. Wait a paddlefoot. That's not friendly. Hmm. Something kind of familiar about that fellow. We go to village. I tell you a whole story. Meanwhile, aboard Trader Ace's boat, a quick change is taking place. I fooled them, but they didn't fool me. <laughs> I remember Clutch Cargo. 
I'll hurry out to my island of take a napa and stop him and those snoopers from coming. The big bird is hungry and his beak is sharp. My pet will fly out to greet them. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh -oh, a hungry giant condor bird about to be turned loose on Clutch and his friends. Don't miss the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and the Devil Bird. In the temporary village of the Boleros, Chief Mambo is telling Clutch and Company how they lived happily on their sleepy little island of Tekanapa. Green trees and grass there with bananas and coconuts and much fresh water. One day, big devil birds swoop down on people whenever they go outside of huts. And they were afraid the condor would carry them off, eh, Chief Mambo? That's right, Clutch Cargo. You say you learned from my adventure logbook about my trip through the Andes Mountains of South America where the condor birds live. That's right, Clutch Cargo. That's why I sent for you. And the biggest condor bird I captured was no larger than a man with his arms outstretched. Like this, Clutch? That's right, Spinner. This devil bird big as your airplane. <laughs> it must be a giant. This I've got to see. I, Admiral General Patskero, am at this moment ready to launch my one boat invasion to drive the terrible condor from the island of Teganapa. You got yourself a crew, Admiral. Let's go. Clutch and company with Admiral General Pasquaro head for the island of Teganapa as the Admiral explains his special anti-condor weapon. And when the trigger is pulled, the counterbalance swings this hatchet, which cuts the rope to the spring attached to the hammer, releasing the gazoo. You understand? Well, it's a little confusing, but... Uh... I saw a cement mixer like this once. It was hooked to a steam shovel, and... Let's just hope it works, if we need it. And we do need it. Look, the condor. Great Scott, look at the size of that bird. What do we do, Clutch? There's no place to hide. Wow! Never fear when Patskaro is near. With my special anti-condor gun, which I invented myself, I will shoot him down in flames. That bird looks big enough to rip the deck off this boat, and us with it. Man your battle stations. Ready? Stick close to me, Spinner. The condor is attacking. Aim. All right, you great grandfather of a turkey. This will finish you. Fire. <laughs> Admiral, please, senor. We are at sea. Okay, then. Admiral. Good shot, anyway. Thought I missed him. Must be a strong wind. That's the same. You scared the condor away. Look, Clutch! Look! The projectile is dropping back right at us. But that is not part of my plan. It's going to hit the deck! <laughs> Hang on to my neck, Paddlefoot. Clutch, where are you? Right here, Spinner. Wow, what an explosion. This self-inflating life raft will save the day. Here, Spinner. Give me your hand. Come aboard, Admiral. Only pieces left of the boat. That was a close call for us. Do not worry, my friends. We are not licked yet. But what if the condor comes back? I have another anti-condor weapon, folding type, in this little box. Watch. Well, I'll be. I never would have believed it, but what are you doing, Admiral? Wait! I just nailed it to the floor. Oh, no, no, don't! Something must have gone wrong. Too late to hurry now. These are dangerous waters. We'll have to swim for it. Clutch! Clutch, look! Wow, that's a shark's fin. We're in for it now. Ay, ay, ay! Can Clutch and Company be saved from the jaws of the hungry shark? See the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo, with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and the Devil Bird. Last time, Clutch and company were attacked by the Devil Bird, a giant condor. 
Admiral General Potquarrel's fatal gun backfired and sank them. Suddenly, the fin of a hungry shark cut through the water straight toward them. <laughs> Suddenly, Paddlefoot swims away from the others and straight for the oncoming shark. Come back, Paddlefoot! Come back! I'm going after Paddlefoot. You two stay together. What's it? Why, it's Chief Mambo. Sorry it scare everybody, Clutch Cargo. Canoe looked like shark on top to fool giant condor bird. Gee, Paddlefoot was brave. He ought to have a medal. You were mighty brave too, Spinner. But a dog doesn't want medals. Just good care and kindness for me, Buster. Our next move is to take a good look at Chief Mambo's island of Tekanapa from the air. I have a feeling there might be someone on it. Chief Mambo, go with you, Clutch Cargo. Do not forget me, General Admiral Patskaro. I am ready to launch another invasion, this time from the air. All right, Admiral. General, please. Okay, General, but no special weapons this trip. Meanwhile, out on the island of Teganapa, Trader Ace and his first mate, Tubbs, are busy digging up another treasure chest. Open the lid, Tubbs. I can't see. King's ransom, emeralds, rubies, pearls. Duh, I need the money. Jerry, this is the richest one we found yet. Stop dawdling and keep digging, you fool. There must be more. Wait a minute. What was that? Duh, I didn't hear nothing. An airplane. Quick, to the Blowmobile. The condor will have to discourage them. That plane will be a sitting duck. <laughs> Clutch flies straight across from the unhappy island to Chief Mambo's home island. Chief, is there anything valuable on your island of Tiganapa? Bananas and coconuts, very valuable. Nothing else on island, except old pirate boxes. Gee, you mean real treasure chest, Chief Mambo? Full of shiny junk, no good to eat. Natives use for ornaments on palm trees at Christmas time. Afterwards, throw in ocean. This whole thing is beginning to make sense now. Clutch! I see a boat. Sure enough, Spinner. Hidden in that little cove. Looks like Trader Race's boat. Yeah, and the coconuts are still on the deck. He didn't take coconut milk to any orphans. While Clutch and his friends are looking down at the boat, not one of them sees the giant condor rising from the island's highest peak. I want to get aboard that boat for a look around. Too late, Clutch. We already seen. Golly, Clutch. Look. It's the giant condor! He's swooping down on us! You big chili peppers! If I only had my special anti-condor aircraft gun! As the condor swoops over Clutch's plane, his giant claws open, dropping hard-shelled coconut right on them. Look out! We've been hit! One went right through the wing! Looks bad, but I still have control. Just hope the covering doesn't rip off the wing. Uh-oh! That one hit the propeller. The condor is knocking us to pieces. We lose control. Oh, my God! It's a like Clutch and company are in for real trouble. Can they possibly get out of that screaming dive? Don't miss the next exciting adventure with Clutch Cargo. Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and the Devil Bird. Last time, Clutch and company were flying over the island of Tekanapa when they discovered Trader Race's coconut boat hidden in the cove. As they prepared to land, the giant condor attacked, dropping hard coconuts on their plane and sending them into a crash dive. Clutch knows that the torn wing covering could rip off if he pulls out of the dive too sharply. Easy now. Back on the wheel. There. Wow, I'm glad we're out of that dive, Clutch. You better land, I think. Don't argue with that big bird anymore. We haven't much choice, General. Nice stretch of beach here. I'll set her down. What, Clutch? There goes the condor. He thinks we crashed into the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> we sure fooled him. That highest peak on island, condor bird have nest up there. That lower peak will be a good observation post. Then let us storm the hill and capture the peak. Gee, you mean attack the condor's nest, General Admiral? 
Well, or uh, uh, no, Spinner. The other one is more important. You go with the general, Spinner. Chief Bombo and I will swim around to Trader Ace's boat and see what we can find on board. Okay, Clutch. Remember, if you see the condor fly up from the other peak, send us a warning signal. Use this mirror to flash us. No, no, my friend. General Admiral Pachquaro has brought along a special anti-condor signaling machine, which I invented myself. Gosh, where is it, General? Inside this little box, a pocket-sized folding kit. Okay, General, if you're sure it'll work. It cannot fail. Company, fall in. Forward, march. You two battle foot, come on. Rup, 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 rup. While General Potsquaro leads Spinner and Paddlefoot up to their observation post on the lower peak, Clutch and Chief Mambo swim around the reef and into the cove. Look at that load of coconuts they steal from my island. Uh, they must be mighty special coconuts. I want a close look at them. You said it, special coconuts. Best in world, Clutch Cargo. Wonder why robbers not take bananas, too. Hey, Chief, come here. Look at this. Here's why, Chief. Some of these coconut shells are hollow. The jewels taken from pirate treasure chests are hidden inside. Um, crazy. That junk no good to eat like coconut. No, but hiding some of these filled with jewels among the real coconuts is a good way to smuggle them past the police. Uh, too bad you found out about this. Uh oh. Trader Ace has a helper. Uh, that's right. I'm first mate in the tubs. So your business is smuggling, huh? Yeah, and I'm going to make sure you and the chief never tell anybody about our loaded coconuts. At the same time, from the lookout peak, Spinner and the general see the condor soar from his peak and head toward them. Quick, General Admiral! we got a one clutch! Time to use my special anti-condor signaling device. <laughs> Ready, aim. Hurry up, General Admiral! Send it! The condor is almost here! Fire! What do we do, General Admiral? The giant condor is swooping down on us! The giant condor flashes across the peak. <coughs> and snatches Spinner and Paddlefoot. The condor's got me! It's carrying me away! <coughs> up in the claws of the devil bird. Can anything save Spinner now? Be sure to see the next exciting adventure with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and the devil bird. At this moment, the missile message fired by General Admiral Pottsquarrel comes flying through the air and... The what's the... Got you. Oh, oh, Chief oh. Oh. Here's the message from the General. What did it say? It says, look up, the condor is coming. Good grief, the devil bird is flying away with Spinner. Big devil bird carry Spinner to nest. Very dangerous. I'm going up there, Chief. You keep Tubbs the smuggler here. Like you say, Clutch Cargo, no problem. In Ace's Blowmobile, Clutch races for the condor's nest on top of the peak. At the same time, the condor is returning to the peak. As he flies over, his claws open. And Spinner and Paddlefoot drop right onto a pile of coconuts. Wow, what a trip. You okay, Paddlefoot? Oh, the Paddlefoot is landing. Look, Paddlefoot, look. The condor's head is opening up. That's no real condor. It's just a glider. Right, kid. Too bad you won't get home to tell your little friends about it. <laughs> Come here, kid. You better leave us alone, or you'll have to answer to Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo? <laughs> yeah. I'll take care of him later. We'll settle it now, Ace. So the condor bird is only a glider. You used it to scare the natives away so you could steal their jewels. Look out, Clutch. He's getting away. Oh, no, you don't, Ace. Clutch makes a flying leap. Clutch made it. Down the slide on the side of the peak, the glider races. Wow. This condor is trying to shake Clutch off the glider. Gosh, they're fighting on the wing. There's not a parachute between them. Quick, 
Dick is greased lightning, Clutch grabs Ace Condor and flips it over his head. Ace rolls off the wing. Is that even a black-hearted villain like Ace Condor hit the ground? Clutch dives the glider toward the falling man. Clutch is swooping over Ace Condor. He's gone. Oh, careful. Please don't drop me. Oh. Did you see that battle point? Clutch grabbed Ace Condor right out of the sky. Gee, Clutch can do anything. Well, Chief Mambo, the trouble's over. Much thanks to you, Clutch Cargo and Fred Spinner, my people come home to own island now. I also thank you, Clutch and Spinner. But you helped capture the smugglers, General Admiral. Or is it Admiral General? <laughs> Neither one, Clutch. I am Secret Agent Tabasco. We have been after these two smugglers for a long time. Gee, a real detective. Well, I'll be. The Condor Devilbird turned out to be useful after all. Chief Mumbo see Condor Devilbird fly many times. Did not know it could swim. <laughs> Adios, my friends. Goodbye. Goodbye, Admiral General Detective Tabasco. And so ends the story with Clutch Cargo and his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and the Devilbird. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting adventure with Clutch Cargo. Cargo with his pals Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, the Dinky Incas. High above the jungle in Peru, Clutch and company wing their way, ever watchful for a sign of an American expedition headed by Professor Wingate Wofford. According to my information, Spinner, Professor Wofford was to have arrived at the lost Inca temple a week ago. He sent regular radio messages to his wife, and then suddenly the messages stopped. Naturally, the professor's wife became alarmed. And that's when they called us, huh? Right, Spinner. Two other men were with the professor, and they haven't been heard from either. What is it, boy? Oh, we see something, Clutch. Looks like the ruins of an Inca Indian village. Meanwhile, from the jungle below, two men hear Clutch's plane as it begins to circle overhead. Ah, oh, just our luck to have somebody come snooping around. Maybe they won't land, Puffer. Maybe they'll think the road is too rough. No such luck. Here they come. Now we gotta work fast. Grab that loudspeaker and let's go. Where to? To the temple. We can't let them find us or our goose is barbecued. We'll make a little pass over that road to see if we can land. What do you think, Clutch? It'll be bumpy, but we can make it. Here they come. Let's go. Okay, gang. All out. We're here. Gee, Clutch, how do you suppose this road got way out here in the jungle? It was probably built by the Incas who lived here 2,000 years ago. Golly! Let's take a look around. 2,000 years ago? Gee, do you suppose they still live here? Well, none of the original ones. Though it's believed some of the ancestors may still be living. You mean like cousins and aunts and uncles? Yes, Benny. Only they'd be great, great aunts and grandparents. Oh, 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 sounds like Paddlefoot found something. I think you're right. But go easy, this is strange country. Oh, oh. We're coming, Paddlefoot. Gee, somebody set up a camp. Right. And unless I miss my guess, it's Professor Wofford's camp. Look, there's a book on the table. The professor's diary. The last time he wrote in the book was just one week ago today. Listen, here's what he wrote. At last, we've reached the ancient Inca ruins. We've set up camp. My assistants, Upper Jones and Shiny Ford, have just left to explore the ruins of the temple. Is that all he wrote? That's where he stopped, Spinner. It was one week ago. <coughs> Sounds like Paddlefoot's found something else. Good old Paddlefoot. It looks like their food storage. Well, we can't learn any more by staying here. Let's head for that temple. Maybe we'll find something up there. Clutch! This is spooked! Huh? That book, the professor's diary. It's gone. I put it right there on the table when Paddlefoot barked. Do you... Do you think this place is haunted? 
No, Spinner. There are no such things as ghosts. Somebody took it. Let's go on to the temple. Are we going to climb way up there, Clutch? We sure are. They're coming this way, Papa. Let them come. We're ready for them. Get ready now. When they start up the steps, we'll clobber them. Let's climb to the top and have a look around. Sure is high. Hold it. Won't be long now. Just a few more steps. Ready? Now. How can Clutch and Company avoid being crushed by the falling idol? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, the Dinky Incas. You remember last time, Clutch and company had gone to the jungles of Peru in search of Professor Wofford and his expedition. Strange things began to happen at the professor's campsite. As they started up the steps of an ancient temple, we'll clobber them now. Quick, Spinner. Paddlefoot's on shelter. In there. Looks like an accident. Wow. That was close. You boys okay? I... I think so. Stay back, boys. I'll take a look outside. Well, that did it. All clear. But, Papa, you're all wrong. They're all right. I'll bet that statue didn't fall by itself. I think it was pushed. Let's find out. Here they come. Let's move. Keep your eyes open. Paddlefoot's already up where the statue was. Maybe he's found something. He sure has. Just as I thought. That heavy timber was used as a lever to topple that statue. Golly! Looks like they were playing for keeps. Now on, we've got to be doubly careful. Look, Paddlefoot's picked up their scent. Good boy, Paddlefoot. Go find them. Come on, Shiny. That mutt has spotted us. Grab that dog. Hurry, Shiny, or he'll catch us. Paddlefoot's hot on the trail of something. There he goes, down that corridor. There's the sacred door. Hurry. The dog's right behind us. There's Paddlefoot. But he stopped. Must have lost the scent. Boy, you can't be right every time. We lost him. Yeah, but for how long? He'll follow us again soon as we leave here. We've got to get rid of them strangers like we did the professor. Right, before they discover that secret room with all the gold. Too bad the professor had to find it. Oh, well, that's the way it goes. We'll keep looking. I don't blame him. It's pretty bad. Come on, boy. That mask won't hurt you. It's not alive. voice frighten Clutch and Company away, be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo. 
with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, The Dinky Incas. You remember last time, Clutch and company climbed to the top of the temple to find the place deserted. Paddlefoot, however, managed to find the scent of two nasty men, Puffer and Shiny, who disappeared through a secret door. Suddenly, go away. Here you will find nothing but trouble. Did you hear that, Clutch? It must be a ghost. There are no ghosts, Spinner. And certainly no ancient Inca ghosts who speak English. Leave us alone. We've been asleep for a thousand years. Let us rest. That'll scare them all right. <laughs> I like to see the look on their faces. Oh! Oh, no! No, 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 Look at what? Those eyes move. Those eyes in that statue. Have you lost your mind? I guess you're right, Papa. But I'd have sworn I... Come on, now. We've got work to do. They'll be real scared, and i got a plan that'll fix them. We'll get out of here and start yelling for help. Suppose we run into that man with the kid and the dog. We'll run into them, all right. We'll call them and act like we just saw a ghost. We'll convince them we're good guys. Then, when they start to trust us, we'll do away with them. <laughs> That's good, Puffer. Okay, start yelling. Help! Listen, I hear something. Help! Somebody, anybody, help! Here they come, act scared. Help! Help! Maybe it's the professor or our ghost. Wow, wow, there are two of them. Boy, do they look scared. Oh, kind sir, am I glad to see you. I am Puffer Jones, and this is Shiny Ford. We arrived with Professor Wofford to inspect the ruins of this Inca village. A week ago, the professor disappeared. Oh, so many strange things have been happening. Take it easy. We'll try and help. We heard spirits talking. Then eyes began to move in the statues. Things have been disappearing. Oh, it's awful. Well, for a moment, we thought maybe you were the ghost we heard. <laughs> Paddlefoot. Oh, no. We heard them, too. We've been hiding in these walls since the professor disappeared. Do you have any idea where Professor Wofford might be? We only know where he was when he disappeared. That's okay, boy. They're friends of ours. Could you show us the place from where the professor vanished? We can take you right to it, eh, Puffer? It's just down this corridor. Follow us. I wonder if it'll open. Look at your hand clutch. And to think, they trust us. <laughs> See, clutch, they pushed us. Not only that, we're locked in. This door won't budge. You mean there's no way to get out? How will Clutch and Company find their way out? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo, with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot, in another exciting adventure, the Dinky Incas. You remember last time, Puffer and Shiny, two bad characters, tried to frighten Clutch and Company out of the temple. Pretending to be scared, Puffer and Shiny called to Clutch and Company, promising to help. They pushed us! We're locked in. There must be a way. But I don't see it yet. That's a good boy, Paddlefoot. But we've got to get this door open. We're trying, Paddlefoot. What is it, boy? What's the matter? There must be something, Clutch. Or Paddlefoot wouldn't insist like that. I wonder. Do you suppose these masks hold some secret about getting out of here? Try them anyway, Clutch. What do we got to lose? Nothing, Spinner. Here goes. I'll try this eye. Clutch? Who'd have thought? Only 
Charlie Patterfoot. He seemed to know. Let's not waste any time. This might be our way out. As Clutch and company make their way through the new opening and along the corridor, Puffer and Shiny have plans. Now that we've gotten rid of Professor Wofford and those meddlers, too, the coast is clear for us to get that precious gold. Golly, Clutch, I have a feeling we're being watched every minute. I sort of feel it too, Spinner. But we can't stop. We must find out where this tunnel leads us. Walk quietly and keep your eyes open. Oh, hello there. Why, Clutch Cargo and Spinner, hello. Professor Wofford, thank goodness we found you. And by golly, you're all right. Sure, I'm all right. Been living here like a king with the help of the Dinky Inkers. Who? My little friends, the Dinky Inkers. You mean the ancestors of those ancient Inca Indian tribes? The same. Nicest and kindest bunch of people I know. Oh, they've sure been helping me. These little people have underground passages all through this temple. They even told me you were here. You mean they speak English? Perfect. Watch, I'll call them. Oh, Chief. Yes, Professor. Amazing. They found me locked in this room and brought me food, water, and all my equipment from our campsite. That's how the diary disappeared, Clutch. You mean my diary? Oh, they brought it to me this morning. I never would have suspected it. I almost started to believe in ghosts, the way your diary disappeared. Are you locked in here for good, Professor? Oh, no. I can leave whenever I wish. I haven't gone out because it's safe here. When I found out my two helpers, Puffer and Shiny, tried to do away with me, I decided to stay here. We're here. And we're ready to pick a bone with Puffer and Shiny, too. They pushed us through a one-way door. Excuse the intrusion, sir, but we have known about your every move. We have men planted behind every mast, and they can see through the eyes. So that's what Paddlefoot was barking about. Yes, and he almost caught some of us and nearly gave away our secret. If you don't mind, Professor, I think we should find Puffer and Shiny. I'm afraid they're up to no good. Come, we will show you the way out. Look, Clutch, Eli! What's all this stuff? That's our crop for the winter, mostly corn and beans. And they've learned how to grow giant popcorn. Looks like you'll have plenty of food. Earthquake, Clutch! Sure sounds like it. Take cover, everybody. The whole temple is shaking. Oh, this is the end. It's not an earthquake. It's a prehistoric monster. Is what they hear a real prehistoric monster? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Cargo, with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot, in another exciting adventure, the Dinky Incas. You remember last time, Clutch and company found Professor Wofford in one of the tunnels. Then they met the Dinky Incas, who showed them the way out of the temple. As they reached daylight... It's not an earthquake! It's a prehistoric monster! Rob, it's going to attack the temple! No, Spinner, that's not a prehistoric monster. It's a steam shovel used for road building. I've heard of someone building a new road not too far away. When the rainy season started, they abandoned their equipment. This must be some of it. It'll be a cinch to dig into that temple with this. Look who's driving it, Clutch. Those two men have pushed it in that room. Right, Spinner. Professor Wofford's assistants. My guess is they've found something of great value here, like gold or precious stones. Now they've come to take it. My people, the Dinky Incas, will be very frightened of this giant. I must protect them. Look, Clutch. He started down the steps after the shovel. Stop him, Clutch. He'll be killed. The chief's trying to stop it. He's a brave little man. Clutch starts at Meanwhile, inside the shovel cab. Oh, boy, this will be good. Human beings against this mechanical monster. <laughs> Let them have it, Papa. Right. Can't let one puny little guy stand in the way of millions of dollars of gold and precious stones. Help! Help! Help me! Oh, help. I can't look. Don't worry, help Professor Wofford. Watch, you'll save him. I'll wedge this branch into those tractor treads. We stopped. The treads must be jammed. 
Hey, Papa, there's that big guy. I'll dump this shovel right on top of him. Uh-oh. You got him. Papa, that meddling mutt is digging him out. Don't worry, we'll bury them both. Hey, Paddlefoot, dig! Paddlefoot's done it. Clutch is out, and he's helping the dinky Inca chief. Hurry, chief. Let's get out of here. Dag Nabbit, we missed him. Those two maniacs are trying to batter down the temple. My golly, I've got an idea. Popcorn. Popcorn? I can't popcorn now. Clutch grabs a huge bag of corn, raises it over his head, and throws it. <laughs> Bullseye! Watch this. In a matter of seconds, the popcorn starts to pop. Kimberly Crickets, let me out of here. After me. Golly, it's turning around. That thing's gone wild. So have Popper and Shiny. Look. Help! Help! Save us! Help! We've got to catch that shovel and turn it off. Help! Save us! Stop him! They've had enough for one day. Now's their chance to cool off. You don't know how much I appreciate your coming to get me, Clutch. And if it weren't for you, Mr. Cargo, and your pal Spinner and Paddlefoot, my people, the Dinky Incas, would never have found this long-lost treasure. Now we can live in peace and play. Well, thanks for those kind words. And as for those two crooks, they'll live in peace and plenty, too. Plenty of time. They won't be out in 20 years. It sure served them right. And so ends the story of Clutch Cargo and his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and the Dinky Incas. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting adventure with Clutch Cargo. Is he 
half drowned, but he's coming to. Let me take the control spinner. If our engine stops, we're gone. One of the floats hit a rock. Hope it didn't poke a hole in it. something later. We came in right by your dock, too. Him peaceful and quiet until giant dragonfly come here. Gee, we finally got here. Can I go fishing now, Clutch? Okay, Spinner. Maybe you can catch some fish for lunch. Indian Bill and I are going up this path to his cabin. Here's the cabin. Is that your horse? Not my horse. Him belong to Sergeant Terry, mounted police. Him here now. Yeah, I'm here, all right. This giant dragonfly. Have you seen it? No, Indian Bill and I watched the traps for days, but nothing happened. Then the day after I left, Indian Bill's dragonfly appeared again. Hope you can use some help, Sergeant. Sure can. Well, Paddlefoot, I think we've got enough, huh? Mm -hmm. Golly, won't Clutch be surprised. We caught five big ones. I guess the thing to do is for me to dress like Indian Bill and go to the trap line alone. Good, maybe you'll see something. 
It's Spinner. Something's happened. Come on. What terrible thing could have happened to Spinner? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Another exciting adventure, the Dragonfly. Last time, Clutch and company, after saving Indian Bill, headed for his home in the woods. One of them was from the plane, but they landed safely. Spinner decided to stay at the lake and fish while Clutch went with Indian Bill to his cabin. While they were talking with Sergeant Terry of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police... Help! Clutch! It's Spinner. Help! Something's happened. Help! Sounds coming from over here. Help! Help! We're coming, Spinner! Clutch! Get him down! Help! You hold him, Spinner, Clutch. Me untie rope. Got you, Spinner. You're okay now? That's a nasty trick, setting a trap like that. Somebody meant to snag you, Indian Bill. There were two paths, and I guess I took the wrong one. But you didn't drop your fish. Wow, they're beauties. I didn't want to get them dirty. You're a brave boy, Spinner. I'm Sergeant Terry, Royal Mounted Police. Now let's get back to Indian Bills. And as they go, someone is watching them. <laughs> What's the matter, boy? It's only me. Sure, Paddlefoot. It's Clutch. Ooh. I'd never have believed it, Clutch. You look just like Indian Bill. You keep him closed good, Clutch. That's my best trapping suit. <laughs> Let's hope I can fool those fur thieves. We'll move on down to the trap lines. Oh, this will be keen. The canoe is soon amongst the rough rapids. We'd better pull into the bank now. Then I'll go on alone in the canoe, the way Indian Bill does. Here is a good place to stop. All out. When you get to turn in river, stop at Big Tree. You'll find long rope tied to it. Rope got them hooked to put on canoe. It holds you when you look at trap line. We'll stay in the cover and follow you down. Someone may be watching. Okay. I'm off. Good luck, Clutch. You need them. Boy, look at Clutch go. Almost like he's got a motor in it. There's the bend in the river ahead. Now to steer this thing toward the land. Hope I don't rip the bottom out of this canoe. Made it. That's the right tree, all right. Now to hook the rope on the canoe and let her drift. His canoe's back in the water again, and he's almost reached the trap line. at the end of the safety rope. Trap line should be just about here. As Clutch leans over to pick the trap line from the swift water, back at the big tree where the safety rope is tied. Whoa. What the? The rope broke. Oh, no, the paddle. And those walls are only yards away. The boat's loose. He's lost the paddle. Escape going over the falls. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, The Dragonfly. Last time, Clutch and company with Indian Bill and Sergeant Terry started downriver to inspect the trap lines. Clutch, dressed in Indian Bill's clothes, was alone in the canoe, held by a safety rope. As he reached for the trap line, the rope broke. The boat's loose. He's lost the paddle. Oh, he'll go over the falls. Oh, this 
Mr. Indian? Heave ho! Heave ho! Whoa! Whoa! Hooray! We saved Crunch! Thanks to all of you, I think we've drawn our thieves out of hiding. If you look at the end of that rope, I'm sure you'll find it's been cut. You'll right, Clutch. Rope's been cut. Whoever did it thought you were Indian Bill. They'll stop at nothing to get control of your trap lines. They can't be too far away, either. I'd like to scout from the air. Somehow, we've got to rig up another float on the plane. Clutch, me got a big idea. Use canoe for float. My gosh, you've got it. That's a great idea. Canoe's about the right size, too. Okay, let's get going. The canoe is fixed onto Clutch's plane, and they are soon ready to go. Won't last forever, but I hope it'll hold for time. I'll stay here, Clutch, just in case we have visitors. Paddlefoot and I are ready, Clutch. We'll help you look. Me come, too. Me sail canoe up in sky. Glad you ought to come. We need you. But you'd better ride in the cabin with us. Well, so long, fellas. Hope you find out something. to get to the barn. Doesn't seem to be a gate. Guess we'll have to climb it. No, Spinner. Wait. Don't touch that fence. It's charged with electricity. Got you, Spinner. And just in time. Phew. Boy, am I lucky. Me not come here for a long time. This fence new. Clutch, I think I heard someone. You're right, Spinner. Come on, behind those bushes. Oh, look. Me know him, him, him Slippery Smith. Look, he went right to the fence and unhooked those two wires. He went through that hidden gate and into the barn. Come on, we'll follow. There's your giant dragonfly, Indian Bill. An army surplus twin-end helicopter. And look at the furs, millions of them. That sound like thunder. It not rain, sun shining. That's not thunder. Look, the whole roof sliding back. Where do we go, Clutch? You stay with Indian Bill. 
I'm going to get in that helicopter. They're ready to haul a load of stolen furs. Clutch opens the door, looks around, and crawls to the helicopter and climbs aboard. But just then... Gotcha. Spy on us, will ya? You're all going for a little ride, and when we get way up in the air, I'm going to throw you out. <laughs> all set, Mushy. The roof's open, and here we go. Indian Bill's hands. Awful quiet back there, Mushy. Go and check out fine feathered passengers. Right, boss. Nice deal. Everybody nice and comfy? <laughs> you got him, Clutch. What was that? That you, Mushy? Clutch Cargo is the name. Your friend's nappy. Stop! Please, don't hit me! I'm outnumbered. It's unfair! Tie him up, Indian Bill. I'll pilot this so-called dragonfly. There you see, Sergeant Terry. Thanks, Clutch, for a job well done. When the furs are sold, the money will be turned over to Indian Bill. The helicopter was stolen. We'll return it. Gee, you're gonna be rich, Mr. Indian. And you deserve it. And I guess this ends the mystery of the giant dragonfly. Sorry, Clutch. We gotta go back. You mean you like that place so well you wanna go back? No, Clutch. We forgot my fish. <laughs> <laughs> and so ends the story of Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and the dragonfly. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting adventure with Clutch Cargo. Another exciting adventure, Dynamite Fury. I wish I could tell you what's up, Spinner, but I can't. All I know is that we're to meet a man named Rocky Diggers. But where? At the base of the mountain area. If I'm not mistaken, that's our landing field now. Looks well, kind of run down, doesn't it? It's the construction company's private field. be the man who's supposed to meet us. I'm sure it is. Howdy, I'm Rocky Diggers, construction supervisor for the dam. I'd know you anywhere, Mr. Cargo, from the picture of you and your adventure logbook. And these fellas must be your pals, Spinner and Paddlefoot. How do you do, sir? Wow, wow. Let's hop in the Jeep and head for camp. I'm sure glad you're here. What seems to be the trouble, Rocky? We're supposed to complete the dam in one month. Everything was going along fine until just a week ago. Suddenly, things started to bog down. We began having landslides that slowed us down. I've lost three trucks this week. All three of them have gone off the cliff. Sounds like sabotage. What happens if you don't meet your deadline? We lose the job and have to pay back all the money we've earned. We'll be ruined. I figured if anybody could solve our situation, it's you, Mr. Cargo. Well, Rocky, that's awfully nice of you, but just what do you think we can do? Find out who's responsible for the accidents, the delays, and weird goings on. Well, of course, we'll do our best. Right, boys? You bet. Thanks. I feel better already. Break. 
start holding. If it rolls over us, we'll be like pancakes. The have to try to stay out of its way. Hold on, everybody. being hit by that truck. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pals Spinner and Pavlefoot in another exciting adventure, Dynamite Fury. You remember last time Clutch Cargo and company met a man named Rocky Diggers who told them about losing four trucks in a single week while building a huge dam. As they headed for the dam site, a truck loaded with dynamite began to roll out of control right towards them. Clutch, we'll never make it! We're goners! Hit the brake, Rocky. We made it. Sure hope the driver got out. We'd better see if we can help. the man who was driving the truck. Hey, Dogby, come here. Me? Yeah. Okay, boss. What were you doing up there? When the brakes didn't work, I jumped. You almost killed us. We were right behind you in the Jeep. Gosh, if I'd have known that, I'd have rid the truck right over the cliff. That wouldn't have been necessary. We don't want anyone to risk his life any more than he has to. That's what I figured. That's why I let her go. That's the fourth truck we've lost this week, and you've been driving each one, Dogby. You don't think I done it on purpose, do you? Of course not, but you could be more careful in checking the trucks before you start. I'll be more careful, Mr. Diggers. I'll go down and see if there's anything left of the truck. We'd better get along, Rocky. We've got lots to do. Tons and tons of concrete, steel, and man hours. And there's a crew standing around there waiting to blast, and no dynamite. I see what you mean when you say you're losing money every day. One of our big jobs right now is to clear out that big spillway so the excess rainwater can run off and prevent floods. Where will that spillway take the water? To a huge man-made lake on the other side of the mountain. You think we can look through the dam? You bet, Spinner. That's what we're going to do now. Golly, what a funny elevator. No side. And stay back in the center, Spinner. Don't go near the edge. Lower away, Frenchie. Boy, this is fun. Hold it there, Frenchie. Meanwhile, on top of the huge dam, grimy Dogby peeks into the control room at Frenchie, the elevator operator. Hey, Frenchie, I'll relieve you so you can get some coffee. Merci, thank you very much. Now, let me see, which one do I pull? Another exciting adventure, Dynamite Fury. 
You remember last time, Clutch and Company, with Rocky Diggers, construction supervisor of the dam, narrowly escaped death when a loaded dynamite truck almost hit them. Later, as they were inspecting the dam, Grimy Dogby took over the controls of the elevator on which they were riding. Wow! We're going too fast! Stop playing with the controls. Anybody hurt, Monsieur Rocky? We're all okay, Frenchie. What happened? Sorry, boss. No man. Well, tell him to be more careful. We could have been killed. You weren't sent here to relieve me. Why, he's gone. Well, that's it, Clutch. You can see the holes we've drilled for blasting. Now, if we only had dynamite, we could blast and set our dam footings. Without the dynamite, work has to stop. We'll get your load of dynamite through, Rocky. Won't we, fellas? Huh? Us too? We'll go, Clutch. We'll help. Thanks, fellas. We've got to get a load through today. If we don't, it'll be too late. All I ask is that you be very careful, Clutch. Remember all those other accidents. We'll be careful, Rocky. And we'll get that dynamite truck through. I suggest we take a boat and go downstream to town where the loaded truck is. If anybody sees us, they'll think we're going fishing. Swell, Clutch. The quicker, the better. The boat's right over there. Just make sure no one hears of our plan. Oh, no. Grimy Dogby heard every word and is at this time sailing on that cable car to the river side of the canyon. Soon, Clutch and his two companions start downstream in a rubber pontoon. Good luck, Clutch. See you soon. We should be back before dark, Mr. Diggers. Wow! Wow! As Clutch and his two companions approach the narrows through which the river passes, a solitary figure awaits at the cliff edge high above. It's none other than Dogby, the truck driver. That must be the narrows just ahead. When we clear them, we'll be almost there. Why do they call it the narrows? You'll see for yourself in just a little while, Spinner. Golly, Clutch, we're picking up speed. Look at us go. That's because the narrower the stream or river becomes, the faster the water rushes. Even as Clutch explains the narrows to Spinner, Grimy Dogby, who is hiding behind a big boulder, is busily engaged in the act of trying to pry the boulder loose. Rapids ahead. Hold on. Okay. Holly, these narrows are narrow narrows. What's the matter, Paddlefoot? Look, the boulder. It's falling right on us. <laughs> so long, pals. Oh, no. Hit the deck. What can possibly stop that boulder from crushing Clutch and Company? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Cargo with his pals Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, Dynamite Fury. You remember last time as Clutch and Company and Rocky were talking about getting the dynamite truck through, Grimy Dogby was listening to every word. As Clutch and Company passed through the narrows on their rubber boat, Dogby loosened a huge boulder from above. It's falling right on us! <laughs> so long, pals. Hit the deck. Thank goodness the narrows are narrow narrows. That falling boulder was no accident. Somebody doesn't want us to deliver that load of explosives. We can expect more trouble from the same source. I guess I'll need another plan. Looks like we're in the clear at last. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Just ahead is a small town of Fuseville. That's where we pick up the truck load of dynamite. Hello, you Clutch Cargo and Company? That's us. Mr. Digger phoned me to have a truck loaded and ready for you. Good. I want to check the truck before we start over the mountains. I don't blame you after all those accidents. There it is. I checked it myself. But you can't be too careful. Especially when you've got passengers. Clutch checks every detail of the truck. The explosives, the wheels, the brakes, and the steering. Everything checks out fine. And soon they're on their way. Check the brakes on this little hill just to make sure. They work fine. We might as well go on up the hill, Spinner. Everything's in order. Clutch, there's a chain across the road. How come? They don't want people using it. We're on a private road built by the construction people. I'll get out and lower the chain clutch. What's the matter, boy? Okay, clutch, let's go. to the top spinner. Wow! What a hill! Now we stock down. Oh no! Brakes are out. What happened? The emergency won't hold either. What are we gonna do? Nothing we can do but ride her out. fate awaits Clutch Cargo and Company. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pals Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, Dynamite Fury. You remember last time Clutch and Company arrived in town, checked the dynamite truck thoroughly, then started for the dam site. As they stopped to lower a chain across the road, Dogby cut the truck's brake cable. Clutch and company were driving a runaway truck. We're going over! Yeah! Clutch, we're heading for the dam! I know, Spinner. Hold on. <laughs> We're slipping back, Spinner. You climb out and pull the trailer release. I think I can hold it with the low gear. I'll try, Clutch. We're right over the spot where Rocky wants to blast the spillway. <laughs> Hurry, Spinner. We're slipping. Here goes. <laughs> You saved our lives. Aw, oh, shucks, Clutch. It was nothing. Congratulations, Clutch. You saved the dam and blasted the spillway area. Most of the credit goes to Spinner. I couldn't have done it without him. Congratulations to you, Spinner. You're a brave boy. Oh, oh, I better scram out of here. Hey, who's that up there running along the top of the dam? It's probably the same guy who pushed that boulder down on us. He's the one behind all these accidents. It's Dogsby, headed for the cable car. Stand back, you guys. I'll drive across the dam and intercept him. Hey, Wrench! 
Archie, lower me down, quick. Okay, hold on to your hat. That's the crook that's been causing all the trouble, Frenchy. Let me take over those controls. Oui, oui, monsieur, with pleasure. Hey, Frenchy, watch what you're doing up there. Oh, now give it to him, Monsieur Clutch. Please, oh, please stop it. I give up. You can haul him in now, Monsieur. I think he's at it. Here's your man, Rocky. Grimy Dogby. If he could have stopped you, Dogby's outfit would have gotten a completion contract. Thanks to you, Spinner and Paddlefoot, that didn't happen. I knew I could count on you. We're glad to be of help, Rocky. This dam is going to benefit a lot of people. Yeah, and the next time you build a dam, we'd like to come and help you. Huh, and so ends the story of Clutch Cargo and his pals Spinner and Paddlefoot and Dynamite Fury. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting adventure with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, The Elephant Snappers. Golly, Clutch, it's great to be coming home. I'm going into the first drugstore we see, and I'll order an ice cream soda that high. Sounds good, Spinner. And we'll get Paddlefoot a great big bone, so he'll know he's home. Capital City calling Clutch Cargo in aircraft NO to you. Capital City from Clutch Cargo, go ahead. Urgent message, come at once. Hotel Grand Plaza, Capital City. Most urgent. Signed, Rampour. Message received, over and out. That's a message from one of my best friends, the Rampour of Monsoon Isle. He once saved my life in the jungle. Sounds like he's in bad trouble. We'll soon find out. We're coming into Capital City Airport now. Clutch and company lose no time in getting to a taxi. Hotel Grand Plaza, in hurry. This is an emergency. But their departure has been observed. Hello, boss. Clutch Cargo. Got that message the Red Door sent. He's on his way to the hotel now. I'll take care of him. He's going to be sorry that he got mixed up with this. And so, before I left the Rampour, I made him promise that if ever he needed help, he'd send for me. Here's the hotel now. We'll know the trouble in a few minutes. Once inside the hotel, they find the place a beehive of activity. Looks like a national holiday in here. I just heard someone mention the Rampour. This is terrible about the poor Rampour. Terrible. I understand they didn't find out until this morning. This sounds serious. Come on, Spinner. Clutch finds the number of the Royal Suite, and they head for the 30th floor. Here's the Royal Suite, Clutch. Straight ahead. I hope we're not too late to help. May I help you? Clutch Cargo. Oh, thank goodness you've come. The Rampur... Is... is he all right? The Rampur is in bed. But he'll want to see you right away. Follow me. They go through several large rooms until they reach the royal bedroom. Oh, I wish my old friend Clutch Cargo would come. He'd know what to do. Your wish has come true, Rampur. Mr. Cargo is here. Tanya's right. I'm here. Oh, I'm so glad to see you, Clutch. A terrible thing has happened. A very dear member of my royal household has vanished right under our very noses. This morning when the servants went into her room to serve her breakfast, Daphne was gone. Not a trace of her anywhere. Daphne? Who is Daphne, Rampur? Daphne is my rare snow white elephant clutch. A elephant? <laughs> 
Yes, that's her picture by my bed. Pure white and worth a king's ransom. Elephant napping right here in the heart of the city? What? It's a message wrapped around a stone. Stay out of this clutch cargo if you value your life. Ah, clutch! I'm scared! Will that note of warning stop Clutch and Company? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, the Elephant Mappers. Last time, Clutch and Company came to help the Rampur of Monsoon Isle, whose rare white elephant, Daphne, had disappeared. Suddenly, through the window, came a stone. Clutch! I'm scared! A rock thrown through a window, and we're on the 30th floor. Doesn't make sense. Do you think it came from an airplane? I don't think so. But I think I know where it did come from. Come on, Spinner and Paddlefoot, we've got work to do. <laughs> We'll be back in a little while, Rampur. Thank you, Clutch. Please hurry. Oh, my poor Daphne. Clutch and company hurry to the street floor of the Rampur's hotel, and then to the roof of an office building across the street. And there they find what Clutch was looking for. What is it, Clutch? It's an ancient catapult that works by a strong spring. You pull it back. Put the stone on the sling and then let it go. And we're dealing with a master criminal spinner. There are the windows of the Rampour's bedroom across the street. This contraption could easily heave a rock through the window. We'll turn it over to the police. Golly, Clutch, why would anybody steal an elephant? Probably for a big ransom. You mean money? Yes, Spinner. Whoever stole that, he knows the Rampour is wealthy and will want his rare elephant returned. Let's get back to it. <laughs> It'll cost him a very big ransom. I'll pay any amount to get her. <laughs> oh, my poor Daphne. I know how lonesome she must be. Yes, elephants do get lonesome. Where is Daphne's room, Mr. Rampour? Tanya will show you, but I can't bear to even look at her little bed. I understand, Rampur. Daphne's bedroom is a grand ballroom, the largest room in the hotel. I'll take you there. Wow! Look at the size of this place. It's as big as an airplane hangar. Doesn't seem to be a clue anywhere. Did anyone question the night clerk? Yes, Mr. Cargo. And no one saw Daphne walk through the lobby. The only other way would be through these big doors. <laughs> Look, Clutch. Paddlefoot's acting so funny. You're right, Spinner. I believe he's got the scent. Go get him, boy. Meanwhile, strange things are happening in another part of the city. There's my apartment building, Bugsby. Pull over. Take the elephant out of the truck and up to my apartment. I got the straps all hooked tight. Watch it, Mr. Van Oaksbury. Certainly, Bugsby. Hoist that elephant up and make it snappy. Pastor Buckley, we haven't all day. <sighs> Toughest job I ever had. I sure hope this rope don't break, boss. Let us not dilly-dally over trifles, my dear fellow. Pull! <laughs> The rope that's pulling Daffy up is starting to break. Hurry, Bugsby. That rope can't last forever. Oh. Look out, Mr. Van Hook. The race is falling. Out of my way, you fool. Oh, poor Daffy. Is this the end of her? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, The Elephant Nappers. Last time, Clutch and company learned that Daphne, a snow white elephant belonging to the Rampur of Monsoon Isle, had been stolen. The criminals were hoisting her up to their apartment when... Look out, 
must have been hooked on his body. Hey, horse are fresh. What a critter, boss. Looky. She's hanging by her trunk on that ledge. That's what I call real elephantin'. Hurry, Bugsby. Use the elevator and hook that cable back on her harness. While Bugsby ties the cable to the straps on Daphne, Van Hoax stands guard. Soon the cable is tied, and Daphne is again on her way skyward. Hurry, Bugsby. Do something quick. Here comes the law. You'll have to stop blowing that horn. Uh, what's going on here? Evening, officer. Just hoisting my new grand piano up to my apartment. Couldn't get it through the door. Eh, uh, don't wonder. Look at the size of it. First time I ever saw a piano with four legs. Well, anyway, be careful. Meanwhile, Paddlefoot leads Clutch and the rest of the search party to a dignified old building. Oh, no. A sportsman's hunting club. Look at Paddlefoot. He thinks he's found Daphne. But there's stuff. I'm sorry, Ramper. Still no lead. Clutch. Peanuts. How about peanuts? She's got to eat. No, Spinner. She's a peanut hater. They give her indigestion. She only eats the finest of continental cooking. Good. If she's that particular and doesn't get what she wants, maybe she'll kick up a fuss and help us find her. We'll put everyone on the alert. In the luxurious penthouse of Van Hooksbury, master criminal of upper crust underworld society, for Daphne, this is the last peanut. Don't just shake there, Bugsby. Do something. In the city's scientific laboratory, where all earthquakes are recorded, things are jumping on the seismograph. Oh, earthquake! I've never seen anything like it! Another one in the South Pacific? Get a big shock base? No! It's practically next door! The news of the big quake startles the whole city. That's no earthquake. Unless I miss my guess, it's Daphne. We've surrounded the area like you asked, Mr. Cargo. Are you sure this is the right spot? The seismograph pinpointed the shock waves right on this building. All right, we'll go in and look. Wow, boss, we're trapped. Here it come. Easy, Bugsby. Don't you know I always anticipate these little emergencies? Made an elephant disappear once. Poof. I'll do it again. See? But, boss, a army whirly bird? We're not stealing it, my fellow. We're just following it. It's like the thing that's many at the controls. Most dependable. This is the apartment, all right. Open up in there. Think it'll hold, Mr. Van Hoek's belly? Push, Bugsby. I'll do the thing. All right, men. Break it in. Will they get through in time to save Daffy? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Chicago with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, the Elephant Nappers. Last time, Clutch and company, while looking for Daphne the Elephant, heard of an earthquake in the heart of the city. They rushed to the building in hopes of finding her. Oh, Elephant here! Something's fishy. You think they threw the coop, Clutch? Maybe you've got something there, Spinner. Maybe they did. Hawksbury's Operation Elephant Lift is well underway. Shoot an ambulance to the seismograph laboratory right away. One of our boys is cracking up. I did see it. I did, I did. An elephant flying a helicopter. Clutch receives the police report about an elephant flying a helicopter. And soon is in hot pursuit. Maybe we can overtake them. And I think I know where. After an hour in the air, the elephant nappers are nearing their destination. We're landing here, boss? Certainly, Bugsby. 
Can you think of a better place to hide an elephant than a private game preserve? But what will the owner say? Don't worry. Colonel Twaddle's off in Africa. Won't be back for months. All right. Unload that beast and make it snappy. But on another part of the grounds, that doughty sportsman, Colonel Twaddle, returns unexpectedly with a very restless trophy. A prize fighting bull from Spain. Tally ho, Hawkins! I'm back! This is indeed a surprise, Colonel Twaddle. I was on my way to hunt, Hawkins, when I ran into this magnificent brute. Most dangerous fighting bull to ever enter the ring. Gun. But suddenly, Colonel Twaddle's old jungle fever known as Ungawadi hits him. What is it, sire? Songahili! Alert the gun bearers! Oh! Colonel Twaddle stops shouting and rages to try his fighting bull. Bull Pat stands Bugsby and Van Hoaksbury. What a spot for vacation, boss. Be my guest, Bugsby. Live it up. She loves me. She loves me not. Quiet, Bugsby. Didn't that sound like thunder? Did you get the license number of that truck? What can we do about Colonel Twaddle? Humor him, that's all. Well, men, organize a hunt, boys. I keep hearing elephant trumpeting. Taking a bad turn, he has. Is Ungawada catching Hawkins? Why do you ask? Look. Miss Camille. <coughs> am I seeing things? I hope not, Hawkins, but so am I. Charge! Coming, Buana. Fighting bull sees a new target. Charges head down, straight for poor defenseless Daffy. Will she ever escape the mad bull? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot. In another exciting adventure, the Elephant Nappers. Last time, Clutch and company were hot on the trail of the criminals who stole Daphne the Elephant and hid her on Twaddle's ramp. A prize fighting bull broke loose and charged the helpless Daphne. Clutch's helicopter has arrived over Colonel Twaddle's ramp. My Daphne, there she is. And there's a wild bull charging straight at her. We're too late, Clutch. Poor Daphne doesn't know how to defend herself. Maybe we can give her a quick lesson. Take over the controls, Spinner. Got him, Clutch. Clutch, what are you going to do? Don't worry, Rothbard. Lower, Spinner. Mercy. Don't tell me he's... Well, the mine will hold you until you cool off, Mr. Bull. Clutch! Daphne's running away. Come back, little Daphne. It's only us. Colonel Twaddle, still delirious with Ungawati fever, has organized an elephant hunt. An elephant charge! Gun bearers, ho! Water hits him. Oh, sure. Colonel Twaddle's walk in Africa. Shut up and let's get out of here. Oh, mercy me, my poor Daphne. What can we do? I'm afraid that's an elephant gun. We'd better get her. Fast. Just in time, too. Sounds like war breaking up. Why, Daphne sure looks happy. So does the Rampoor. He'll never forget what you've done for him, Clutch. Rampoor! 
Eduardo. Forgive me, Rampo. I never dreamed it was your Daphne. Clutch! There go the elephant nappers! Wait, Clutch. Daphne can help. Look at Clutch. He's on Daphne's back. After them, Daphne. They're headed for the lake, Clutch. Can elephants swim, boss? Shut up and keep rowing. They're gaining on us, Bugsby. Faster, faster. Stop. Or I'll sink you. Faster, Bugsby, faster. Okay, Daphne. Give them a broadside. Fire one. Bullseye, Daphne. Did you say something, boss? Good show. Daphne's bringing them back. Just keep marching, boys. Daphne's feet are getting cold. Thought I heard shooting here. Anything wrong, Colonel Twaddle? Arrest those two for elephant napping. You and your bright ideas. I'll be forever grateful, Crutch, Spinner, and Paddlefoot. My kingdom is yours to command. Our reward is to see you and Daphne together again, Rampur. Paddlefoot and Daphne are friends, too. <laughs> And so ends the story of Clutch Cargo and his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and the Elephant Nappers. Be sure to tune in next time for another exciting adventure with Clutch Cargo. with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, Feather Fuddle. Hello? Yes? Oh, Tom Page. Hello, Tom. How's my faithful editor? Clutch. Would you come over to the office right away? It's urgent. Professor Chickadee, president of the Fine Feathered Friends Club, has disappeared. Oh, yes. Professor Chickadee is famous. Where was he last seen, Tom? He left last month for the remote area of Big Wet Lake to observe the hatching habits of the whooping crane. The Big Wet? Why, Tom, I know that area very well. I wrote about it in my first adventure logbook. Precisely. That's why I called you, Clutch. You're publishing his latest bird-watching book, aren't you, Tom? That's right. He's up there collecting material for the last chapter. The book goes to press next week, and I haven't heard a word from him. Uh, excuse me. Good morning, Robin. Glad you could make it. This is Robin Wren, Professor Chickadee's nephew. How do you do, Mr. Cargo? I've heard of you. And this is Spinner. Hello, Mr. Wren. And Paddlefoot. What? I'm sorry to hear about your uncle, Robin, but we're going to do all we can to find him. I can't thank you enough, Mr. Cargo. Mr. Page asked me to bring my uncle's picture. Here it is. He's quite small, only five feet two. As you can see, very distinguished looking. When he talks, it's like birds singing. He's so devoted to them. Thanks, Robin. This will be a great help. Yeah, I'm sure if anybody can find him, Mr. Cargo, you can. We'll do our best. And now, Tom, we'd better get going. The sooner we start the search, the better. Well, fellows, goodbye and good luck. Off on another adventure, go Clutch and Company. Nice weather for flying, huh, Spinner? Yeah, and nice weather for bird watching, too. This big, wet lake country is pretty rugged. I just hope we're not too late to find Professor Chickadee. He's a very brilliant man. I read one of his articles entitled, Why is a Pelican? Ooh. Hey, Clutch, what's that funny-looking V up ahead? That's a formation of geese. They always fly in a V formation like that. Hey, that's the way a squadron of airplanes fly. Just one of the many things we've learned from nature. At this time of year, the geese always head north to Big Wet. We're going to fly with them. Huh? How? Watch. and company continue north, led by a flock of geese. Spinner, you can see Big Wet over there now. Biggest game preserve in the world. 
Waterfowl flock here from all over the world for protection against hunters. Oh, so that's why the professor came way up here. It's a bird watcher's paradise. Not only that, it's the last nesting grounds of the near extinct whooping crane. The geese are going in for a landing. We'll follow them in and take a look around. Hey, Foxy, I hear a flock of gooses. They're geese, you don't, and keep down there headed right this way. Do you see what I see? Yeah, biggest goose I ever saw. Stand back. I'm gonna blast. Will that gun blast wreck Clutch and Company? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, Feather Fuddle. You remember last time Clutch and Company were called by Tom Page, Clutch's editor. His call was urgent. Professor Chickadee, president of the Pine Feathered Friends Club, had disappeared in a remote section known as Big Wet Lake. As Clutch prepared to land, biggest goose I ever saw. Stand back. I'm gonna blast. Someone thinks we're geese. Can't they see we're not a goose? Where are we going, Clutch? To find out who's shooting at us and why. I'll get him this time. He's coming right this way. Hold it, Gizzard. That's no goose. That there is a flying machine. What's the big idea? We're no goose. We just landed when they did. Sorry, my partner here is awfully nearsighted. Yeah, I thought you was unfriendly gooses. Geese. Yeah, geeses. <laughs> okay, okay, but you're not supposed to be shooting at geese. Don't you know this is a game preserve? Game preserve? Why, no, I didn't know that. Did you, Gizzard? Nope. Nobody never told me. Well, I'm telling you. And if you know what's good for you, you'll clear out of here. Oh, we will. We were tired of hunting geese anyway. <laughs> he means gooses. By the way, have you seen a little man with a pointed nose who was probably carrying a camera and a notebook? You mean a little thin man with skinny legs, big eyes, a round head, with fuzzy hair? Yeah, by golly, that's him. We ain't seen him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's a funny one, Gizzard. <laughs> you may think that's funny, but it's not. Come on, Spinner. Crank up the engine. Let's go. Right, Clutch. How do you like that? Those snoopers would have to show up just when our feather harvest is getting good. Yeah, Foxy. We really got it soft. We can't let them fuddle up our feather business. Right. We gotta think of a sneaky way to stop them. What if they find that little bird man out there? We gotta get there first and see that doesn't happen. Come on. Keep a sharp lookout, Spinner. Professor Chickadee is out here somewhere. Those two fellas must have seen him. They knew a lot more than they were willing to admit, Spinner. He won't be hard to recognize if we do spot him. Catch! Look over there. Spinner, I think it's somebody's hat. It could be the professor's. Jump out and take a look. Hey, it's Professor Chickadee's hat, all right. His initials are on the hat band. Hmm. Losing his hat could mean he's in some kind of trouble. Look, the professor is in trouble. His tracks stop right here. Hey, Clutch, look at this! Something's been dragged to the water edge. Probably a net. You don't suppose someone trapped him, do you, Clutch? I don't know, Spinner. But I have a feeling he's in great danger. The word help frantically written in the sand. What could have happened to Professor Chickadee? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch, 
Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, Feather Bundle. You remember last time Clutch and Company landed their plane after almost being blasted by a shotgun. They met two characters named Foxy and Gizzard who must have seen the professor because they described him to a T. Clutch and Company find the professor's hat. Paddlefoot finds something else. You don't suppose somebody trapped him, do you, Clutch? I don't know, Spinner, but I have a feeling he's in great danger. Oh, dear. Will this egg never hatch? And I promised the mother whooping crane I'd look after it until she returned. I must have sat here for days. Oh, where, oh, where could she be? We gotta take that bird brain professor by surprise. Yeah, we gotta get the professor before that cargo guy finds him. Else the birdy brain will spill the beans about our feather business. You can still bet he's sitting on that egg. Yeah. <laughs> we caught the mother bird days ago. He don't know she won't be back. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Get out the giant gooseneck, Gizzard. Got it, Foxy. The professor is faster than a mud hen and twice as slippery. Shh. Oh, dear, those two rogues are back, bent on mischief, I see. I must save my egg. Quick, there he goes. After him, Foxy. Don't let him get away. Hunters. They're chasing something. Why, it's, it's Professor Chickadee. And look, he swooped him up in a goose net. If any harm comes to this egg, you'll have to answer to Mother Whooping Crane. Calm down, Bertie, or we'll mix you both into an omelet. Uh oh, hey, here comes that Snoopy cargo. Quick, let's get out of here. We'll beat it for the bulrushes. Cargo ain't one to give up. He'll be back. And when he does, we'll be ready for him. Tie the birdie to a stick. We'll use him as a decoy. And when you get through, help me load our big Bertha. No sign of the professor out this way, Spinner. We lost them back there in the bulrushes. We better circle back. Here they come. Quick, up with our decoy, Gizzy. Steady your own target, Giz. Oh, what? I see something sticking out of the bulrushes. It's the professor. We'll fly in close and have a good look. Ready? Aim. Fire! Is there any way for Clutch to avoid being hit? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Cargo with his pal Spinner and Battlefoot in another exciting adventure, Feather Puddle. You remember last time, Clutch and Company were bound and determined to find Professor Chickadee. The professor had been sitting on a whooping crane egg, hoping it would hatch. However, Foxy and Gizzard found him first as Clutch flew over the spot where they had seen an object. Ready, fire! Tail and wings are on fire. Hang on, Spinner. This is going to be a rough landing. <laughs> I guess we showed them how we can shoot Snoopin' Birdman. Just like shooting a flock of gooses. <laughs> you mean geeses, Gizzy. Gooses? Geeses? What's the difference? 
We can now go back to finishing our fortune in feathers. Please, oh, please untie me. My egg is getting cold. It's all right, yes. Let's untie old Birdie Brain and let him sit on that egg again. Yeah, and when that big old whooping crane egg hatches, it'll be just one more big batch of feathers right for plucking. Right. Start hatching, Birdie. Here you are, Professor, old boy. Your egg is still lukewarm. Spinner, Paddlefoot, you okay up there? We're okay, Clutch, but our plane is all shot to pieces. Lucky for us, that big splash we made when we landed put the fire out. About all that's left is our pontoons and engine. It was those two feather snatchers. They deliberately shot us down with some sort of big cannon. Yes, and they used Professor Chickadee as a decoy. Let's go back there and settle scores with those two. Listen, it's Cargo. He's coming back. We must only wing him. We only shot his tail off. I'll bet he's madder than a wet mud hen. Thank goodness, Mother Whooping Crane's egg and I will be saved after all. Not if we can help it. Stuffed with gunpowder and rocks. We could have been killed. Oh, oh, look, Clutch, there's their trail through the bulrushes. We'll go after them. They can't be too far ahead. Less drag with these pontoons. Hey, Foxy, that bobtail flying machine is catching up with us. Step on it. I've got my foot in the carburetor now. This is as fast as you go. How about stopping him with this keg of gunpowder? While you're standing there, do it. Light the fuse and heave it overboard. No, no. Wait, not that. Quiet, Birdie, or I'll dump you over too. Look, Clutch! He needs something overboard! Dynamite! With no tail on the plane, Clutch just couldn't steer it. Is this the end? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo! Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, Feather Puddle. You remember last time, Clutch and company survived being hit by the homemade cannon. Clutch, Spinner, and Paddlefoot set out in what remained of their plane, still determined to find Professor Chickadee. They had almost caught up with Foxy and Gizzard, who had captured the professor, when Gizzard picked up a can of dynamite. Foxy tells him, light the fuse and heave it overboard. Dynamite! <laughs> that cooked their goosey. They'll never catch us now. <laughs> oh, dear mercy. What? What will ever become of them? They'll become raven bait, that's what. <laughs> We still have our engine. The prop's not damaged. We're not licked yet. Come on, Spinner. I've got an idea. You mean you think we can make it fly again? Yep. Get out the toolkit. We'll catch those wild goose men yet. Hey, Foxy, what are we going to do? What do you think we're going to do? We're going to get our life savings in feathers. Like a helicopter spinner. Now, with a little more luck, we'll catch those crooks. Well, I'll be. Here comes that cargo again. I told you that guy would think of something. Head for the hideout. We've got 
to save our feathers. That's why I've been heading, stupid. They're headed for that big beaver dam. I bet that's their right out. Step on it, Gizzy. We only have a few seconds to load our feather fortune. <sighs> These feathers are getting heavy. I'm going to set down right in the middle of them, Spinner. Watch the feathers fly. Clutch and Company are preparing to test a vertical jet for takeoff. Well, I've told you all there is necessary, Clutch and Spinner, for vertical jet takeoff and landing. The rest is up to you. Yes, sir. Thanks for all your help, Rogers. If these engines work like they're supposed to, we can install them in High Big's new experimental flying bus. Good luck, gentlemen. I hope everything checks out. The three sinister smog brothers, Tom, Dick, and Harry, do a little checking of their own. Brothers, let me say that if this device Clutch Cargo is testing really catches on, we're ruined. Our fleet of 1919 buses is worthless. Right? Right. Well, I don't know. You're overruled, Harry. What goes up must come down. If it works, we'll figure a way so it don't work. Right? Right. Well, I don't know. You're overruled, Harry. All set, Spinner? I'm ready. Hope I got all the signals straight. Don't worry, you can do it. Let's go. Oh my gosh, looks like Clutch will get off before I get a chance to talk to him. Hey, Clutch, hold it, hold it! Oh, there's Hiram Biggs. Now I wonder what he's so excited about. Hey, Spin, Spin! Take off. Hi, Mr. High. What's wrong? Signal clutch back down. It's important. Clutch might be in great danger. Okay, Mr. High. Clutch! Mr. High wants you to land right away. He says it's important. Okay, Spinner. Be right down. Look, it's that noisy Hiram Biggs. He's waiting to tell something to Clutch Cargo. We'll have to do something to stop him. Right. Right. Well, now, I don't know. You're overruled, Harry. Too bad it flies so good. 
Clutch, hurry down here. I've got something to tell you. Aye, aye. Sex out real good. Four of these engines on your Arabus ought to give you plenty of lift. Good, Clutch. Say, I'm glad you got down safe and sound. What's wrong, aye? I come to warn you to be careful. Miss Susie and I have been having a lot of accidents lately. And I'm beginning to suspect some foul plays afoot. You don't say. Yep. We've had two mishaps today already. Just before I left, the whole ignition system. Well, what are we going to do now, Tom? We'll plant this bomb in the ignition. When old Hiram Biggs steps on the starter, kablooey. Right, right. Well, now, I don't know. You're overruled, Harry. This way, we'll blow them all up. Will somebody warn Clutch and Company before that bomb goes off? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, The Flying Bus. You remember last time, Clutch and Company were testing a jet engine for possible use in Hiram Biggs' Aerobus. They are being watched by three slippery guys known as the Smart Brothers, who are about to plant an ignition bomb in Hiram's car. We'll blow them all up. It looked awful suspicious, so I hopped in my car and hurried over here to warn you. This is most interesting. Where's Susie? Did she come with you? No, she stayed to rewire the ignition system and get the aero bus back to flying again. Gee, she might be in danger. Yes, we'd better get back there fast. Okay, let's go. What's the matter, Paddlefoot? What's he barking at, Spinner? Golly, I don't know, Clutch. But he seems to be watching those trash cans. Maybe he saw a cat or something. I'd better investigate. I think he's just imagining things. We'll soon see. Nothing here. Nothing in this one. All empty. If there was only some way to warn Clutch and Company and High Biggs about the bomb planted in their engine by the Smog Brothers. Just what kind of strange happenings are you talking about, High? Sabotage, Clutch. Just plain sabotage. <laughs> See what I mean? Who do you think is behind all this, Clutch? Don't know. But that wasn't just an ordinary accident. The noise was so loud, it sounded like a bomb. <laughs> Meanwhile, just outside the airfield, the Smog Brothers seem to be up to something with their old 1919 bus. I don't remember any bus long here that goes to Middletown. Hey! Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait! Hold up! Oh, boy, are we in luck! It says bus stop! What a peculiar way to run a bus line. Come on, we'll get to Middletown before dark. Look, that sign says... Passengers will please ride on top deck. Well, I'll be... Who cares? Come on, let's get on board. I'd rather ride up here on top to get the fresh air. Yeah, I still smell smoky after that explosion. <laughs> let's see them get out of that. <laughs> oh, my. There's really no one driving that bus.
this is some hill. It sure is making this old bus work. We made it! We're going pretty fast. I hope this old rattle trap can take it. Control. Downhill at 90 miles an hour and no driver. Can they be saved? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, The Flying Bus. You remember last time, the Smart Brothers, Tom, Dick, and Harry, planted a bomb in Hiram's car. It ruined the car and left the clutch and company and high without transportation. Not realizing the danger, they board an old 1919 bus. We're going much too fast. You're right, High. I think I'll have a word with the driver. Hold on to my feet, High. I'm going over the side. Okay, clutch. I got you. Hey, driver. Take it easy. What did he say, Clutch? He didn't say anything. Maybe you'd better try again. He might have fainted or something. Hey there! Well, I'll be. What's the matter, Clutch? There isn't any driver. Fire. Quick, Clutch. Pull me down. <gasps> That was a close one. Is everybody okay up there? We're okay, Clutch. Rats, missed again. That bus must be carrying a good luck piece. Harry, I thought I told you to throw that horseshoe away. We gotta think of another plan to get rid of those guys, right? Right. Well, now, I don't know. You're overruled, Harry. Looks like we're coming to a town. That's Middletown. Turn right at the next little road, Clutch. Hey, what's that? A flying saucer? No, by golly, it's the flying streetcar bus Miss Susie invented. Flight characteristics are certainly erratic. Hey, what's the matter with it? It's headed right at us. It's out of control. Hey! Hi. You would better drive this thing. I'm going up and see if I can help. completely out of control. Your number one engine is out. Hold on, Clutch. You can make it. Rattle down your other engines and equalize your power. I'm stalling out, Clutch. I can't hold it. Good heavens, we're falling. Oh, I can't look. The aero bus falling and clutch hanging on underneath. Will he be killed? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, The Flying Bus. You remember last time, Clutch and Company with Hiram Bates had a mighty close call in one of the Smart Brothers' 1919 buses. 
as they arrived in Middletown, they saw High and Susie's aero bus flying out of control. Clutch tried to help Susie, but the bus crashed anyway. Come on, Spinner, give me a hand. You all right, Miss Susie? Yes, thank you, Clutch. I'm fine. I'm glad you're all right, Miss Susie. But why'd you fly it? I just couldn't wait any longer, High. And everything would have been all right, but... Somebody loosened the connection in this engine. Gee, do you think it was sabotage, Clutch? That's what it looks like to me, Spinner. Damage isn't too bad, though. We could repair it. If we can, we can demonstrate the aero bus. Then High and I will get the bus franchise for Middletown. Otherwise, those smog brothers will continue using their smoggy buses. Well, come on, let's get her down and start repairs. We've got to meet tomorrow's deadline at the city council. Looks like you've had some trouble. Say, weren't you our bus driver? Who, me? No, that was my brother Tom. I'll help you get that machine untangled from that tree. Be careful. Don't damage it anymore. I'll be careful. I do a lot of this work. <laughs> to the mayor's committee tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. We'll never make it now. I guess I better get out of here. Oh, my gosh. Those two look just like that other one. Watch out. Those guys are nothing but trouble. I'm Tom Smog. That was Dick. This is Harry. Looks like you've had some trouble. You were the bus driver. Why'd you abandon us coming down that hill? Sorry about that, friend. A big bump threw me clear out of my raincoat and hat and through the rear window. No way to warn you. We was almost killed. You seem much shorter. I hit with an awful jolt. I'll be glad to haul that junk away for two bucks. Junk? That plane represents three years of hard work. You smog brothers seem to bring us nothing but bad luck. We'll gladly stick around and help you put it together, right, Harry? Well, now I don't know. Forget it. I have a feeling we'll do much better without your help. Okay. I'll take my bus back now. I certainly wouldn't want their help. I don't trust those smog brothers. Those smog brothers seem to be in everything. Junk business, wrecking business, bus business. And maybe even monkey business. But let's roll up our sleeves, folks. Got until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning to get this flying bus into the air again. Can they repair the aero bus in time to meet the deadline? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Fargo. Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlebutt in another exciting adventure, The Flying Bus. You remember last time, Clutch and Company with High Biggs and Miss Susie were preparing to take the flying bus from the tree. The Smog Brothers appeared and brought nothing but bad luck with them, finally breaking the flying bus in two. All night long, Miss Susie, Clutch, and High worked furiously to repair the broken aero bus. It's six o'clock. How are we doing? The airframe is all back together and ready for those new engines. Good. Attaboy, Paddlefoot. You're doing great. At ten minutes to ten, we find the mayor's transportation committee waiting at the park for Clutch and Company to show up before renewing their contract with the Smog Brothers. They should be here soon. This whole thing is very silly, Mayor. Our old bus system is working fine. Uh, give me something old but reliable every time. Why, here come the Smog Brothers. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm glad to see you're on time. Oh, we're always on time, Your Honor. 
If not, we change the schedule. Very commendable. Would you like to step into our wonderful bus and be seated? Hiram Biggs will probably be late. Quite late. Why, that's a splendid idea. Let's do. It's almost 10 o'clock, Lodge. We should be there in a few minutes. It's 10 o'clock, Mayor. I guess that flying majig of Hiram Biggs couldn't get off the ground. You're wrong, Tom. Here it comes now. Do something. Uh, Mayor, let us take you all for a free ride. Uh, we'll go over and look at the new bridge the Smog Brothers Company has just completed. I don't see anyone down there. There go the Smog Brothers in their bus. Those Smog Brothers are pulling a fast one. We'll follow along. You see, Mayor, haven't I been telling you how generous, kind, and honest the Smog Brothers are? Right up ahead is that great Smog Brothers engineering achievement, Smoggy Bridge. I'll stop here. Isn't it marvelous? I understand they used only seven sacks of cement building this bridge. Wonderful. Save the taxpayers a lot of money. Splendid. Let's drive out on the bridge and see the view from there. Oh, no, no. We better be getting back. Oh, uh, we have time, I insist. Never thought when we built this bridge that we'd have to drive on it. There they are. They're driving onto that skinny little bridge. Oh, no. Look, it's collapsing. Here's our chance to prove what the Arabus can do. On aboard, we'll help you. That pillar's about to go. Not me. We prefer to go down with the ship, right, Tom? Right. Well, no, I don't know. For once, Harry, you're not overruled. Come on, boys, let's go, go, go. Okay, what? Take her away. Awarding the transportation contract to Hiram Biggs and Miss Susie. And you small brothers will get the transportation contract at the county jail. Right? Right. Well, now, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and so ends the story of Fudge Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and the Flying Bus. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting adventure with Fudge Cargo.